Welcome to the stream. We're going to get into a couple of things tonight. It's going to be a real interesting stream with some of the things we have to talk about. I know that a lot of you guys have probably already been talking about this uh, everywhere. Uh, everyone's all on Twitter, Facebook, um, YouTube, everywhere, just talking about all of the news today. A lot of good news. What's going on, Slim Shady? Hey, I appreciate you stopping by, my man. Thank you for that. Thank you for swinging in, man, Slim Shady. Um, first off, kicking off the stream, of course. Uh, we've already done this earlier uh, yesterday. Uh, but Dan Enos, new OC, welcome to the U, my man. Butch Berry, welcome to the U. And Eric Hickson, welcome to the U, my man. We're happy to have you guys on board with the Canes. Hope these guys are ready to get to work. Um, cause we've got a lot of work to do. I'm pretty excited. Um, I'm pretty darn excited about Eric Hickson. Uh, some people were complaining that he doesn't have enough experience at this level and whatnot, but he's a South Florida native. And I think he brings, uh, some high level energy to the running back. So I'm, I'm super excited about him. What's going on, Harry Baller, uh, Baller. What's going on, man? Uh, so let's, we're going to do a little bit of investigative work tonight. Uh, there's, there's been a lot of talk on Twitter with JT, with Sam Bruce, a couple of other things like that. We're going to get into that tonight. And uh, we'll talk about Dan Enos a little more in depth and Jalen Hurts as well. So there's a lot to talk about in the stream tonight. So let's just go ahead and kick off. Maybe we'll take some phone calls and stuff. We'll see. I haven't decided yet. We might do that a little later on in the stream. So hope you guys are having a good Saturday. Uh, first off, like we said, yeah, Jalen Hurts. Uh, yeah, Jalen Hurts is visiting a couple of other schools. Most notably, he was visiting Maryland. Uh, he is going to be supposedly in Coral Gables tomorrow is the last thing that I heard. Uh, so tomorrow or Monday, uh, Jalen Hurts will be visiting Miami. So it is still an option. It's still on the table. Uh, we argued this the other night. Some people want him. Some people don't. So Whatever you guys are still thinking, I'm still on board with it. I'll go ahead and just put my opinion out there. I'm still on board with Jalen Hurts coming to the U. I understand, like we said, that he's a one and done. We, we talked about this for hours the other night. But I understand that he's a one and done. He's only going to be here for one year. I'm fine with it. I, the one thing I do hate, uh, and I actually think that uh, Alonzo was touching on that a little bit, that it, it, it really stinks for Perry and Weldon and Williams if it's not going to actually be a real open competition. And I think that if Hertz believes that he's not going to be the guy no matter what, he won't come to the U. Just saying. He, he, he only has one year of eligibility left, so he's going to go to a school even if there, there's not a chance for them to play for the national championship. I still think Jalen Hurts would go to the school that guarantees him a starting position because why would he go to another school and just sit on the bench for his last year of eligibility. It just doesn't make sense. So he's only coming to the U if he knows he's going to start, period. That's, that's what I think. But um, Dan Enos, we can talk about him a little bit more. I know you guys are probably already familiar uh, with his background. Uh, he does have head coaching experience. He's not coming in as just a quarterback's coach. He has been the head coach in the past. It was for a smaller school, Central Michigan, but he was the head coach there for four years, from 2010 to 2014. Uh, he was the OC and quarterbacks coach from 2015 to 2017 at Arkansas. And then, of course, most recently this last season, Enos was the quarterbacks coach for Alabama. Uh, the, the number one plus with Enos is he is known for developing players. Uh, he's, he's really good at developing, especially QBs. He has a, a pretty big background with developing QBs. And actually... Let's look, let me look a little bit here. Because he's been in college football for a while and just football in general. Uh, let's see, let's go take a look. Let's go take a peek. Uh, if you look at Dan Enos, his background, hopefully this is large enough for you guys to see it. Mostly you can see here, mostly quarterbacks coach. Uh, OC, QB, wide receivers at Lakeland, Northern Michigan, OC, running back, quarterback, wide receiver, OC, quarterback, quarterback, OC, quarterback, quarterback, Cincinnati, Michigan State, quarterbacks, coach, Michigan State, running back, coach. What's going on, Candle, man? That is primarily uh, his background, is developing QBs. And uh, because of that, I'm, I'm pretty excited to have him 
on board. Uh, he was the associate head coach at Alabama. Uh, he had that title as well, along with quarterbacks coach. As, as you can see, everything's been updated uh, to green and orange now that he's at the U. Uh, so pretty excited about Enos. Uh, I'm pretty excited to have him on board. So uh, the other guy, of course, we were talking about uh, was Butch Berry, the O-line coach. Uh, he was uh, most recently at uh, Tampa Bay uh, in the NFL, the Buccaneers. So we, we have some NFL experience coming over to the Canes. What's going on, Mr. Goodman? And uh, what's good, Canada man? The U is back. How's it going, my man? Welcome to the stream tonight. Uh, we're just now getting some people pouring in. YouTube has been messing up lately. It's not been sending out notifications. Uh, there may be a lot less people in the stream tonight. Uh, just, just giving you guys a heads up. Uh, YouTube has, has really been dropping the ball lately. So let's, let's look at a little bit what started all of this. On uh, What's funny is on... On, the twi on Manny Diaz's Twitter page. Um, this is kind of what started everything on Friday morning. We'll take a look over here. It was pretty funny. Uh, people were trying to figure out if this was some type of cryptic message to who he was hiring. This is the tweet that started it all on Friday. This was it. It was just one of the LA Dodgers players hitting a home run. This is on Manny Diaz's Twitter. Yep, Th this is what started it all with the Dan Enos hire. Basically, Manny Diaz's way of saying, hey guys, I've got a home run hire coming up for you guys. And then within the hour, it, it was confirmed that it was Dan Enos. So needless to say, Manny Diaz was excited about it. The thing is, is Manny Diaz... Hey, what's going on, Zulu? Warning on my big screen. Miami has all the hype right now. Yeah, Miami is the hottest team in college football right now. Zulu. Uh, I said that on Twitter and I said that on Instagram and some people are laughing at me, but who's everybody, who is everybody talking about right now? Miami. That's what everybody wants to go to Miami. Miami is the talk of the town right now, man. But uh, Manny Diaz said that Dan Enos was who he wanted all along. Uh, he, he made that very well known that that's who he wanted. We'll be looking for you in the parking lot after the game. <laughs> oh, Brian. Oh, man. Even up here in Ohio making news. Oh, that's crazy, Steve. That's what I'm saying. Right now, Miami is the talk of the town. Uh, everybody is talking about Miami, wants to go to Miami, wants to report on Miami. Miami is who everybody's talking about right now. I'm just sending out a, uh, a message real quick about the stream here, guys. Um. Let me send this out right quick. And then we'll dive a little bit deeper. I, I, we're going to talk about JT. Have I watched film on Martel? We actually did watch some film live here on stream. Uh, the U is back. And um, I would need to see a little bit more from him. Uh, but overall, he's, he's not bad. He's not bad. We're, we're going to talk about Jeff Thomas here in just a second. I'm just putting this post up, and then we're going to get into it. Because I want to show you guys some stuff. I'm sure you've already seen it. And Nicholas Bonsky says, don't be surprised if Jalen commits tomorrow. Are you thinking that he commits to the U? Or somebody else? All right. Just had to put a couple things out there real quick. Everyone put J2. Uh, Glenn's, Glenn's, Glenn's a good guy, man. He likes to troll a little bit, uh, but he's a good guy. <laughs> so what's interesting is, and everybody's already talked about this, but we're, we're just covering it a little bit more, uh, is Jeff Thomas's Twitter. I know I'm grasping at straws here by looking at Twitter. Trust me, I know. I'm just saying, sometimes this stuff has turned out to be something. And when you look at his Twitter, where's the Illinois stuff? Where did it all go? Because Jeff Thomas's Twitter was littered with Illinois stuff. And now all I'm seeing that's left up here is highlights of him at Miami. 
Hmm? Miami highlight. Miami highlight. I realize these are older tweets, but that's all that's left. He got rid of all of the Illinois stuff. Uh, he had an Illinois background. He had a ton of stuff talking about how he was so happy to be back home, back to Illinois, and he took it down. Need to go after Four Star Plum Lee. Yeah, uh, Slim, Slim Shady, I see a lot of people uh, mentioning Plum Lee. A lot of people are on board with that guy as well. Uh, it, it's, it's really an interesting situation for us because we already have some guys that, that could be developed with the right coaches that have the talent there. Um, but everybody's... Because we're getting new coaches in place, I guess, and new systems, everybody's just, let's just get rid of everybody. I'm fine with getting rid of everybody with the coaching staff, uh, but I would really like, honestly, to keep Perry and Williams. I don't want to see those guys go. I mean, they, they chose the U. So, you know, I, I love seeing those guys on board. I don't want to see them go anywhere. Uh, but I do think that if, uh, and I, I'm just curious if you guys have the same opinion, I do agree that uh does jt have to sit out or can he play now he would have to sit out i believe it depends on if he signed the paperwork uh because someone said that jt didn't sign the paperwork at illinois some people say he never did anything with it he just said i'm going to illinois and that's it other people have said no he signed uh, the paperwork uh he did the uh, financial aid stuff at illinois that He's going to have to go through a lot of hoops and stuff to even get back to Miami. So nobody really knows who's who's true in this situation right now. Uh, Coop, what do you think of Jalen coming to Miami? And can they play for Natty next season with him? Uh, I don't think that we can uh, compete necessarily for the national championship just yet. Uh, we'll have to see, though. Uh, Cunnington says, I'm 100% with you, Perry and Williams. Yeah, now, I, don't, don't get it wrong, though. I'm not opposed necessarily to seeing Jalen Hurts come, but like I said, I, I would agree that I want it to still be a competition. If Jalen or Perry can beat out Hurts in the system that will be implemented with, with what we have right now with the new coaching staff and the new scheme, it's only fair that they start over him. And again, if that's even a possibility, Jalen Hurts does not come to Miami. He's not going to come to Miami to sit on the bench and cheer us on. That's, that's, it's not going to work like that. Yeah, so Dan is saying that he's not necessarily tied down to Illinois. Here's the thing. Either way, I'll break it down this way. Either way, Jeff Thomas wants to come back to Miami. I, there might be some hurdles. There might be some loopholes, some things he has to go through. I can tell you Jeff Thomas wants to come back to the U. He, he had more disagreements with Rick and with Duggins and things like that. What's going on, Ty Nightingale? I know that maybe he struggled with some grades a little bit and stuff, but... He, want, he wants to come back to the U, most definitely. That's where his brothers are. That, that's where his family, football family is, not his actual family, but his football family. Because uh, you, you build a bond over time, you know, with your squad, with your guys that you play with every day. And I, I think that JT wants to come back to the U. Uh, I mean, he, he's, he's made it pretty obvious here that uh, there's no Illinois stuff on his Twitter. That's pretty obvious. He took it all down. So then that brings us into the next guy. Okay, I want to ask you guys this then. I'm, I'm going to put it on you guys. I'm going to put it on you guys. If JT wanted to come back to Miami, if it is true, and you are Manny Diaz, let's play hypothetical for a second. You are Manny Diaz. You're, sit, you're sitting back in your office chair. You're chilling. Jeff Thomas comes in and says, Coach Diaz, I want, I want to play for Miami. I'm sorry. Take me back. Do you take him back? Do you let Jeff Thomas back on the team? I'm waiting to see what you guys say. Dylan says, come on in. Dan says, clean slate. Brian says, yes. Candle says, bring him back. Glenn, yes. Ty, yes. Okay, so everyone is on board with bringing JT back. I agree. I agree. What's going on, Hurricane Zone? I agree. I say you give the man, here, here's the thing, he's a kid, he's young, give him a second chance, 
tell him here's the thing JT has to understand that he has a bright future ahead of him he could be playing on Sundays he just needs to get his head on straight focus you know work on his grades a little bit and just basically go to school play football and just Focus in. Just you know what I'm saying? He has a really bright future ahead of him. And I say yes, give give the kid a second chance because he is just that what I just said. He's a kid. And kids do make mistakes, like uh everybody's talked about. Some of us, not all of you, have been 18, 19, 20, 21. You you would probably go back and change some of the decisions that you made. If he comes to Diaz and says, Look, I, I want to come back. I'm sorry, there were some disagreements, this and that. Will you take me back? Absolutely. Take him back. Give give him another shot. And also, he's he's a good football player. I'm just saying. That does matter. He's a good football player. So, everyone in here said yes. Not a single one of you said no to taking JT back. Okay, let me ask you another question. Let me ask you another question. Let's take a look. Who remembers this guy? Who remembers Sam Bruce? Bruce wants back in Miami. December 30th, 2018, Sam Bruce. I want to come back to the U. What else do we have here? Six hours ago, Sam Bruce. I promise to be good. Do you also take Sam Bruce back? We said we would take JT back. Why would you not take Sam Bruce back? He wants to come back. Some of you know the charges of what got him kicked off of the team. We can discuss it if you want, if you're not aware. So do you take Sam Bruce back? I'm looking at chat right now. Why did he get dismissed again? Uh, there were some uh, drug things that involved uh, marijuana, just being straight with you guys with Sam Bruce. Honestly, it was really, they made it a much bigger deal than it should have been, just honestly. They made it a much bigger deal than it should have been, uh, but it, that is what it involved. Uh, and he was basically dismissed because of that. So it looks like everybody is on board. I see a few people. There are a few people that are saying no. Why do you say no to Sam Bruce coming back, but you say yes to JT? I just want to know. I'm just asking your opinion. I, I want you to elaborate if you were saying no to Sam Bruce. And the gun. They mentioned the gun thing, but again, everybody has said this, and I know that I, I think that you guys are talking about with Alonzo touching on that too. When you are younger, don't tell me that you haven't flashed money at some point or even guns or, or anything. I mean, you are a kid. I mean, come on. Now, there, there, is, there is a point in time when you have to say, hey, look, you know, chill out a little bit on posting this or posting that. You know, let's focus on football. Let's, let's, let's get things moving. But I'm not opposed to saying, come on back. Show us that you're serious. That's the thing. Show us that you're serious though people can change people can change so people are still what's going on emilio people are still torn there are people still saying no to sam bruce here's the thing a lot of the players i'll show you this a lot of the players are on board they're pulling for him you got ar over here saying and this is another thing this is something that's kind of funny here Amon Richards tweeted earlier today, bring back Lambo Sambo 1, which is Sam Bruce, 2. Hmm, 2. Does that mean that they are definitely considering bringing back JT? Bring back Lambo Sambo 2. Who else could he be referring to? Hmm? I mean, I'm just saying. I'm not a, 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 a Twitter detective here. I'm not trying to spread rumors or start rumors. Maybe I am. I don't know. But he said, bring back Lambo Sambo 1-2.
Hmm. You know, I'm, you see what I'm saying? I'm just saying. That, that, that's what I'm saying. Oh, man. Yeah. I'm, I'll, I'll tell you guys my opinion. I'm perfectly fine with bringing back JT and with bringing back Sam Bruce as long as they show that they're serious, they're committed to the U, they're committed to you know the, the grades, to football, to everything, and just being serious because they have left once uh, one of them unwilling with, with the Sam Bruce situation. But JT said that you know they came to a mutual agreement, and uh, I, I think there were issues with them getting along and things like that. And it's understandable. Sometimes people just clash. Uh, sometimes people just are not going to get along, and it just is what it is. Uh, now that there's a new coaching staff in place, uh, I can absolutely understand him asking to come back. Both of them, honestly. I don't know where... I think Sam Bruce went to some little nothing school. I, I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just saying. I think that Sam Bruce... Where did he... Where, where is he at now? Does anybody know? Exactly, uh, Perez. JT really didn't necessarily want to leave. Okay, so Sam Bruce ended up going to... Okay, yeah. I'll show you guys. Yeah. Slim Shady's on it. Slim Shady's on it. Uh, Gulf Coast. Uh, that is where Sam Bruce uh, went to. So... The thing is, we, we can put our opinions out there. Uh, it's going to come down to Manny Diaz and the university because uh, you have to understand that it's it's not just complete open arms here. Uh, we can't just because we all say, these guys are real good at football, so we're taking them in. There, there might be some hurdles and some hoops that have to be jumped through to get these guys back on board. Probably a little easier. Actually, it may not. It, if he didn't sign the paperwork, it might be a little bit easier for JT than it would be Sam Bruce. I don't know. I don't know that for sure. Uh, why did Bruce get kicked out? Sam Bruce was kicked out for um, having marijuana in a car, and he posted a picture on social media of him with a gun or something like that. Again, something that a lot of 16, 17, 18, 19 year olds do every day, but they're in the spotlight. They're they're football players, uh, and it just gets blown out of proportion a little bit. That, that That's all it is, in my opinion. So if I was Manny Diaz, I would, and hey, thank you, Drayball901. Thank you, my man. If I was Manny Diaz, I would be willing to take both of, of them back, JT and Sam Bruce, both. But again, it's, it's, not, it's not just up to Manny Diaz. That's the thing you have to remember. It's, it's not just up to him. It's not. So, I know we talked about this the other night. I know we talked about this. It, we can look at that too. Again, I sound like I'm trying to be some kind of Twitter detective over here. But, and Twitter doesn't mean everything. Players can, I, I don't know if you realize this, but players can troll you and mess with you a little bit on Twitter. They enjoy it. Uh, if you guys remember the Apple White stuff, um, AR and some of the other players were tweeting the apple emojis and they were just kind of messing with everybody and playing with everybody so they, they enjoy it sometimes but there is you can't deny that when you head over to jalen hurts he's following 294 people we touched on this the other night some of his most recent follows are dj dallas brevin jordan and manny diaz um I'm just saying, just saying, I'm just putting it out there. And it, it does matter. I don't know that if you guys don't agree with me, it's fine. But hear me out. It does matter that Jalen visited Maryland yesterday. Yesterday or today is one of the two. I'm pretty darn sure in Maryland it was supposed to be like 30 something degrees. Okay. They typically say your last visit makes the biggest impression because it's fresh on your mind. Yeah, in Oklahoma today, said Dylan. Yep. The last visit is going to make the biggest impression because you're going to remember it the most. You were just there. 
Jalen Hurts is visiting Paradise as one of his, it, it, unless he has other ones lined up, but as of right now, one of his last visits. I mean, tell me this doesn't make a huge impression, especially since the players are pulling for him. So I don't know if he gets to speak with any players or talk to any players or meet any of them, but uh, they seem to be pretty welcoming of Jalen Hurts, uh, the current Miami Hurricanes players. So I'm just saying, I'm just saying. There's going to be a lot of I'm just saying tonight. But I, I wanted to do something. I wanted to do something for you guys. Because I, I jumped on that too. I jumped on the, you may have visited Maryland, but that last impression will be us tomorrow. That's what I'm saying, YouTube. Uh, last impression is the one that will stick with you. That's the one that's going to stick out in your mind on the last place that you just were. So what I'm going to do, I jumped on the Apple White bandwagon as well. Um, I made a video welcoming him because I was like, this is, you know, it, it's Apple White. It, it, it's Apple White. Okay, it was wrong. So what I'm going to do, this is my YouTube channel right here. This is my YouTube channel. I said if it was not Apple White, uh, which obviously it's not, Stan Enos, uh, that I would delete the video. So I just wanted to show you guys we are going to delete uh, the major Apple White video. It's right at about uh, 7,800 views. Uh, we are going to pull that down from the channel uh, because that is not correct. So delete. It's gone. It's gone. Apple White video has been deleted from the channel. Dylan says, no, it's gone. It's gone. It's done. It's done. It's deleted. <laughs> I hope you guys, did you guys watch the uh, Louis Headley interview? Uh, did you guys watch that? If you haven't, definitely check it out. I got to tell you, listen, Louis, Louis Headley is just like how he sounds on the phone, man. Uh, he's super cool guy he he's pumped about coming to miami i mean he is we, we talked for a little while before i started recording and we talked for a little while after recording and let me tell you louis headley i i know that I, he's a king let me just go ahead and tell you i can tell by the way he carries himself by the way he speaks about miami whenever i ask him about it listen he he's he if he could hop on a plane and go ahead and be here and just go ahead and just sign the paperwork and skip all the nonsense, he'd be here right now. Trust me. What's going on, Sam Williams? What's going on, man? Yeah, Louis Headley would be here right now if he could be. Uh, he's excited. He's pumped. It was a really weird scenario because they're like 13 or 14 hours ahead of my time zone in East Tennessee. So we had to line it up weird. I called him at like 9 p.m. at night, but it was like 10 a.m. the next day in Australia. So it was kind of crazy. And I tried to ask him as many of the questions as you guys had submitted as possible. But once we got to about 20 to 25 minutes, uh, it started pushing the time a little bit. Uh, what's going on with Jeff Thomas? I am late. No problem, Christopher. Uh, some people are just starting to roll in because um, uh, YouTube is not sending out notifications properly. So, uh, Jeff Thomas, we do believe, wants to come back to the U. Um, it, it's going to be more of a question of if uh, Diaz and the university are willing to bring him back because he did have some other issues with grades and things like that. So, it's going to be more on that. But JT, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry. It, it's JT wants to come back to Miami, period. He wants to come back. Does Jalen Hurts visit Miami, or is it like a, a conference? Uh, Jalen Hurts will be visiting Miami, yes. Uh, he will be visiting. Uh, you're welcome, Christopher. You're welcome. We were also looking at, I'd be curious, Christopher, um, because we touched on this. There were a lot less people in here, so I'll ask you guys one more time. I'll ask you one more time. There's 112 people in here now. There was only about 50 when I asked earlier. Everyone in the chat said they would take JT back, with the exception of maybe one person, one or two people. I'm going to ask you one more time. If you've already answered, don't, don't feel obligated to answer. You don't have to. But since there's double the amount of people in here that there was in here earlier, if you would take JT back, are you going to take Sam Bruce back? If you Play hypothetical. Play hypothetical with me for a second for anyone who wasn't here. 
Play, pretend you're Manny Diaz for just a second. Do you take Sam Bruce back? See, and I want to know. I want to know. See, there, I see two no's. Why not? Why, why would you not take him back? If, okay, 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 okay. Assume this. Assume, okay, assume this for me. What's going on, Jay Wade? Assume this for me. If they're both willing to put in work and they're legit, they want to be legit. They're, they're going to focus on school. They're going to focus on football. Do, do you take them both back? If they're legit. Because, see, that's the thing. That's the thing. W, you're mentioning it. If we take JT back, I think now you, you can pick and choose because it's your it's your school. It's it's you know it, it's Manny Diaz's decision. It's the university's decision. But if you take JT back with open arms and you say, "Hey, buddy, welcome back," and then you snub Sam Bruce if he really wants to come back, how does that really look? I think as long as they legitimately want to come back and they're serious. And like I said, they're serious about their grades and about football. Why do you not give someone with that talent an opportunity, a second chance? The players are okay with Sam Bruce. I mean, for the most part. Uh, from what I'm hearing from AR, uh, from Realis, uh, from a couple of the running backs, they are okay with Sam Bruce coming back. Yeah, I mean, Jeff Thomas, don't get me wrong, Jeff Thomas would be priority. Uh, and I mean, like we said, we, we already looked, but I, I'll show it again. I'll show it again. Uh, Jeff Thomas pulled all of his Illinois stuff down. All of it. Now, to some people, like I said, to some people, this isn't a big deal. They say, well, Coop, it's just Twitter. Why do you keep talking about, oh, what, they, what they're doing on Twitter? This is just social media. For kids, social media, a lot of times, is a lot more serious. Just think how big a deal it is if, if your girlfriend breaks up with you or your wife divorces you or vice versa, husband or boyfriend. What's the first thing they do? They're going to go to Twitter and Instagram and Facebook and say, oh, I hate him. He's horrible. We broke up. The first thing they do is they run to social media and start talking. So Jeff Thomas took, uh, there is nothing on here. Look at look at this. There is nothing about Illinois on his Twitter. It was littered with Illinois stuff. All this left is highlights of him at Miami. Tell me that doesn't mean something. He's, he's a kid. A lot of times these kids use a platform uh, like Twitter or Instagram to express themselves. That's what they do. It's just, it is what it is. It's to, today's day and age. It's what, what people do, especially kids, especially the younger generation. Uh, that that 15 to 21 year old, that's what they do. Appreciate it, Sean. Appreciate you hanging out, my man. So the people who said no to Sam Bruce, tell me why. I think I, I think you guys might have already. Um, what did Sam do again? Uh, Sam Bruce was caught having um, marijuana in his car, uh, which was blown out of proportion in my opinion. And uh, he had a picture at some point of him having a gun or something like that. Totally different issues, Coop. Sam Bruce was arrested. Uh, I mean, he, he was. I mean, and it, it is one of those things. Some people do take that into account. Uh, it, it is two different situations. It is. But, hmm, I don't know. I don't know. I think if you take JT back, if Sam Bruce is serious, I think you take him back. I I personally do. If he's serious, but like someone said, I think Jay Wade said it, it would be with the short leash. Uh, if you get into more legal trouble, because that can potentially look bad on the university, that's just being real, then that's it. You're done. And honestly, you can kind of gauge how serious someone is. Have a meeting with him. Bring him, bring him in and sit down with Manny Diaz and uh, the AD and have a meeting with him. Gauge their seriousness. See, you can feel it. You can tell. And just talk to him a little bit. We need size. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, we do need some size. These are relatively um, shorter 
wide receivers, I guess is the right thing to say. How, how big is Sam Bruce? Sam Bruce is not that big of a guy, is he? Hey, Jason, my man, thank you for joining the college football family, my friend. Thank you for that. Uh, Sam Bruce is five foot eight. Thank you, guys. Thank you for filling me in. He is five foot eight, 180. How big was JT again? These are smaller wide receivers, most definitely. Which I can sympathize with. I'm a smaller dude, you know, so. Uh, JT is 5'10", so about two inches taller. So, I just think that you, I think that you have a meeting individually, meet them individually. Uh, there he is, Greg. Uh, it's down in the um, description, my man. It's down there in the description. Yeah, these guys on kick return, if you imagine uh, JT and Sam Bruce back for kick return, that would be pretty crazy. You have to admit. This have to is admit what it takes. pretty crazy. To where to you on the side of your helmet. Sam Williams, my man, thank you for that two ninety nine donation, my friend. Thank you for that. Maybe we should. Let me see. Let me see if there's anything for Sam Bruce. Some people aren't familiar with Sam Bruce. Let me see if I can find him. The problem is that it's going to be, it's going to have to be high school highlights. Um, obviously, he's grown some since then, literally. Um, is he coming back? Uh, JT, I believe, does want to come back, uh, Jeffrey. Let's see. Let me see if I can find one. Because Sam Bruce, correct me if I'm wrong, um, and I, I don't pretend to know everything uh, about all of these players and recruits and things. Did Sam Bruce and JT play together? What's going on, CB Savage? Because I was thinking that they did. I might be wrong. They didn't? Okay. I don't know who I'm thinking of. For some reason, I thought they did. Okay. Right, that's, why, that's why I've got you guys. That's why I've got you guys to fact check me. Tell me if I'm wrong. Alright, so let, let's check out Sam Bruce. For people who haven't watched him. Okay. Here we go. We'll check out Sam Bruce live right here on air. Um, this is his highlights. Uh, was a four-star wide receiver. Um, this is a little old. This is from uh, around two or three years ago. Uh, we'll check it out, though. We'll check it out. Uh, this is Sam Bruce. Uh, he has been very vocal, Jeffrey, that he does want to come back. Uh, this is Sam Bruce. A lot of people didn't get to see Sam Bruce. So, here he is. Number six. Again, smaller guy. He's 5'8". What's up, Adrian? Yeah, they are Uncle Joe, uh, but I, I can't play the college any college ones, uh, or I'll get copyright. Showing some blocks. We're still just kind of checking them out, anyways.
A lot of the players were pulling for him to come back. Karen City says he runs a 4-5-40. Um, I can't verify that, but I'm assuming that you know your stuff. Uh, now, the thing is, somebody said he's slow. No way Sam Bruce got speed, man. The thing is, hey, thank you, Mark. Thank you, Mark Theodore. Uh, Theodore, my bad. Um, the thing is, I do believe that Manny will run a, a, a pretty clean program. So, like I said, I really think, hey, Josh, how's it going? I, I do think the only way it would happen is if they're willing to come in and sit down and, and talk with Blake James and Manny Diaz one-on-one, -on -one and they have a meeting to see what needs to be done. Yeah, and I mean, there are way more hurdles for Sam Bruce than there are for Jeff Thomas. Because if, if the rumors are true and JT didn't actually enroll at Illinois, which is what everyone's saying, I'm talking, you've even got people, let me see if I can find it. Uh, there was a, a place that covered Illinois football. And they tweeted and said, don't be surprised if JT never takes a snap at Illinois. Oh man, I'll never find it. I'll never find it again. But it, it cracked me up because they, they tweeted and said, don't be surprised if he never takes a snap at Illinois ever. Um, because a lot of people are saying that he did not actually enroll. And if so, as long as, I don't know, I keep repeating myself. I'm just saying, what's going on, Matthew? Uh, but more and more people are starting to roll in. If so, it's really just a little bit of paperwork in Manny and the university giving the green light. What's up, Club Kane? Uh, I see all of these. This is what it take. Um, that you give Alonzo, you. and I appreciate I'm sorry that. Your helmet. I appreciate that. Uh, I always definitely uh, promote um, supporting Miami Hurricanes YouTubers. So thank you for showing him so much love, man. What's going on, NASA? What's going on, man? And Greg Bush, my man, thank you for that $5 donation. I did not read your message out loud for some reason, so I'll read it out loud for you. He says, hey, what Coop, take. came in late. To where do you, on the side of your helmet? Uh, what do we know about Butch Berry, the new O-line coach? We'll, we'll dig a little bit deeper into that in just a moment, uh, Greg Bush. Thank you for that $5 donation. And W, also coming through with a $10 donation. Thank you, my friend. Thank you for that. Call, call JT and ask if he's coming back. I don't know. I don't think we can get him on the phone, man. I've only got, I'm not even going to lie to y'all. I only have two players' phone numbers. Uh, that's Rillis George and Louie Headley. That's all I got. I'm not going to try to sound cooler than that. That's all I've got. Yeah, we all you family. That's what it's all about, man. That's what it's all about. So we'll look at, I don't want you guys to think that, again, I, I don't try to act more knowledgeable on um, subjects than I am. Honestly, the graphic that they put up on Kane's football is probably the best breakdown uh, for Eric Hickson and Butch Berry. Uh, so honestly, I'll just pull them up um, just so you guys see it. But thank you guys for those donations again. Thank you for that. Um, you were asking about the O-line coach. Um, this graphic is honestly a, a perfect breakdown. Um, Four years of NFL coaching experience with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Um, developed uh, two of the top young linemen in the NFL. That's pretty promising. Uh, spent five years as a member of Dan Enos' staff at Central Michigan. That's huge. There could already be some chemistry there with him working with Enos. And, of course, Dan Enos being the new OC at Miami. So that is a pretty big deal. Um, but that, that's kind of the back, background on Butch Berry, I think that's a pretty good hire. Obviously, we have been struggling with the O-line. So to bring in new blood 
for that. I'm pretty excited about it. I think that's a good hire. And then also um, the running backs coach. Now listen, tell me what you guys think. Are you guys excited about the running back coach, Eric Hickson? Because listen, I am. There are people on Twitter just blowing up and different things saying that this guy doesn't have the experience. We don't want him. I'm excited about this guy. I'm just going to be honest with you. Uh, he, he's from South Florida. He's an energetic guy, shows emotion. I'm very excited about him. And uh, I, I really, if, if you're not, tell me why. Tell me why. Because I, I'm not a big fan of, a lot of people are saying they want alumni. They want, they're, they're begging for alumni coaches. I don't think, uh, well, I'll talk to you for a second and then we'll cut back to it. I, look, alumni coming back to the school is cool as guest speakers or as, as uh, someone to motivate the kids before a game. Unless they have been coaching since they left the NFL or since they left the U, I don't want them in a coaching situation. It doesn't automatically mean that you're a good coach just because you were a good football player. I'm just saying, you might be the greatest linebacker in the history of college football in the NFL. It doesn't mean that you can actually coach other linebackers and develop them. You just It, do, it doesn't automatically mean that. And that, that's just my two cents. Um, and you're more than welcome to disagree and make your point in the chat. Uh, but I'm, I'm not a big fan of it. Um, um, alumni, uh, definitely I'm on board with them showing up at games, motivational speakers, all that good stuff, but not as coaches, just not as coaches. I'm not for that. But er Eric Hickson, so let's look at his history a little bit. Um, let's see. Uh, he coached uh, rushing leader Alex Barnes, uh, who finished the season with uh, 1,355 yards and 12 touchdowns. Uh, helped Barnes become the second fastest player in school history to 1,000 career rushing yards and uh, starred at Fort Lauderdale Dillard High School and coached NFL first, first rounder Sony Michael in high school. So here's, here's the thing. You have to also understand that they don't have to have, so listen, I, I, I told you I'm, I'm a big fan of Eric Hickson. I'm, I'm fine with the hype. I'm good with it. I'm, I'm down with it. I'm on board. I'm not always looking for that huge, elaborate resume when it comes to hiring coaches. I, I understand that sometimes, because that's part of why everyone's freaking out about Dan Enos, because they're like, oh, he was at Alabama. Like, we... We, we got the, a good guy because he's got this, you know, background of being in Alabama and under Nick Saban and all this good stuff. Okay, but at some point, we're going to run out of old guys who are proven and have these long resumes because they're going to get out of football or they're going to kick the bucket eventually. I'm just saying. I know it's being kind of blunt. I'm just saying. So at some point, you got to start bringing in some younger blood. you got to start bringing in some guys who do have a little bit of – experience obviously they need a little bit you don't want to bring in a guy that has never had anything to do with football and is just learning the rules that's stupid um, but someone who who has been in it but doesn't have this huge crazy resume for these big teams sometimes you just got to bring them in and they can be great they start everybody has to start somewhere and i'm not for learning on the job that's what i'm saying I'm not for learning on the job. That's what John Rick was doing. Let's be real. I think we can all agree on that. If, if, I, can, if I can get acknowledgement in the chat that you guys are still awake, I think we can all agree that John Rick was learning on the job. What's going on, Josh? Uh, and Jeremy. Michael Love says, a good job on production. Switching between camera and you. Uh, the transitions to the screenshots look good. Thank you, Michael. Uh, I worked really hard on that. I worked really hard on that, Michael, and thank you for that. That really does mean a lot. Uh, those It took me a while to get those stinger transitions set up in OBS. Thank you for that, man. Thank you. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm all for bringing in a, a slightly younger guy that doesn't have quite as much experience, but shows that passion, that dedication. You know what I'm saying? Someone someone who's going to be there, the, the team just played, they fly back in, and instead of going home and going to bed, he stays in the office and this he's trying to figure out what happened, what went wrong, how we you can improve. On the side of your helmet. Bobby Brewer, my man, coming in, just dropping a $2 donation, doesn't even leave a message. Thank you for that, Bobby Brewer. Uh, you're actually already up on board, my man. Thank you for that. Thank you for that $2. Who are we talking about? Uh, we're talking about Eric Hickson, the running backs coach. Uh, some people are not happy with that hire. 
And I still didn't see anyone say why. Uh, maybe I'm just overlooking it. I'm sorry if I am. Let me see if I can make the chat bigger here. Uh, I'm worried that I just keep missing it. There we go. I'll make it a little bit better. Is Miami getting back Thomas? Um, it, it's it's a, a good possibility, the truth. It's a good possibility. So Jeffrey uh, is not a fan of Eric Hickson because he can't recruit. I'm not going to lie. I don't know how well necessarily that he can recruit. I do know that he's passionate about football. He's a very vocal, emotional guy. Uh, so he's from South Florida. So we'll see. We'll see. I, I, I will not lie. I do not know how good he is at recruiting. I don't. Um, but yeah, uh, the truth, I didn't mean to uh, stop halfway through answering your question. Jeff Thomas is most definitely this is what it take interested in coming back to To you on the side of your helmet. Coop. Eric Birch, my man, coming through with a $5 donation. Huge supporter of the channel. <laughs> Thank you, Eric. You know I appreciate it. You know I appreciate it. Yeah, Slim Shady. Uh, Slim Shady does know his stuff. Uh, he says Hickson is from Fort Lauderdale. Um, so are you saying that as a, a good thing or a bad thing, Slim Shady? No, Ling Lingard is not interested in transferring. Where, where were those coming from? Are, the, are those rumors that people think Lingard is leaving? Uh, Louis or Louis Perez. Uh, thank you for joining the college football family, my friend. Thank you for that. Jonathan, we've got Jonathan Flagg in the chat tonight. Long time no see, my friend. Very good. He knows the area. Yeah, see, and that, that's what I think. I do think that that's important. I do think that that helps. Absolutely. And uh, Eric Boyes, thank you for that 99 cent donation, my friend. Thank you for that. You know, right? I, I know you've been going through some difficult things, Jonathan. I hope everything's been okay with you, man. I hope everything's been okay with you. My thing is, is I, like I said, I'm, I'm a big fan of it. I think all of the hires, in my opinion, I'm, I'm not trying to be biased here. Listen, guys, I'm not trying to be biased here. I think that all of the hires this weekend were good hires. I, now, here, here's what I want to ask, because this is, what it's, this is what this is titled. Dan Enos, the OC. Is, is he the home run hire that you guys wanted? Maybe not necessarily that you want him, because he really wasn't in the talks, but do you consider him a home run hire? Dan Enos, the OC. Do you consider him a home run with the OC? I want to see what you guys say. Slim Shady says yes. This is what it take. Fergie says yes. Glenn, great you, hire. On the side of your helmet. Tommy R. Perkins Sr., thank you for that $5 donation, my friend. Thank you for that. Depends. No, I'm getting some no's. I'm getting some no's. No, no home run hire. Yes. Okay, so we're about 90% yes, though. We're about 90% yes on Dan Enos. Jay Wade says second to Lane Kiffin. A lot of people were on the Lane train. You're going to have to Google him first. Check him out, Raji. Check him out. Okay. So most people are on board. Yeah. Most people are on board. Okay. Okay. How about this? How about this? I, I'm asking a lot from you guys, and I love the participation. I got to make sure you're still with me, that you, you know, you're not over here with me on your phone, passed out on the couch to sleep. I got to make sure you're still with me. Apple White or Dan Enos? Which one would you have taken? We're doing a lot of hypothetical tonight. You're getting to play Manny Diaz a lot tonight. Picture your Manny Diaz. Apple White's in one chair. Dan Enos is in the other chair. Who do you give the job to? Who do you slide the contract to? I'm looking for Apple White because I'm curious. I saw two Apple Whites. Hey, Mike Watson, welcome to the college football family, my friend. Thank, thank you for that sub. Glenn says Apple White has a huge ego. Okay, so about 90% Dan Enos. Don't worry, I do see the people who say Apple White. 
uh, Micah, Jeffrey, and uh, who else was it? I saw a few more people that did say Apple White. A-List 52 and Opalaka 74. Welcome to the college football family, my friends. Thank you for that. For anybody that is new here or anyone who came over from Alonzo's stream, welcome. I uh, hope you guys enjoy your time over here. Um, yeah, exactly. Either way, I'll put it this way. We can't be settling. That's something that we all said. Uh, we said this, this has to be the time. This has to be the hires. This has to be the run. This is what we need, so we're not going to settle. I'm okay with all of these hires. I'm just going to be straight with you guys. Maybe I'll be wrong. Maybe I'll be wrong. I, I hope I'm not. You guys probably hope that I'm not. But I'm, I'm okay with these hires. I think they're a good choice. I think Manny Diaz really honestly thought it through. He, he got the guys he wanted. Because, again, he said that Dan Enos was the plan all along. Maybe he's just trolling us. I don't know. But Manny Diaz said that Dan Enos was the guy he wanted the whole time. That's what he said. Yep. Yeah. And we did, we did touch a little bit on that. Um, that uh, JT very well could be coming back. He wants to come back. Yes, Nick Saban did praise Enos. He, Nick Saban, okay, here's the thing. Alabama has been a dirty word on this channel since I started it for uh, about the last year and a half. Uh, however, I've slowly realized that I have to say the A word occasionally um, because they are a college football team, so it does happen. Nick Saban, whether you like it or not, uh, is a pretty proven coach as far as I'm listen, he's taken Alabama to several national championships. You cannot deny that. I don't I I, I don't like him either, okay? I don't like him either. Hear me out. Like I said, I wouldn't even say the word on this channel. However, it is good to hear that he praised Enos for his ability to develop quarterbacks. I mean, he was Quarterbacks coach and associate head coach at Alabama. Oh, and it's all good, my man. <laughs> Oblaga says, I've been watching your channel for about two years. Didn't know you weren't subscribed. No problem, man. Welcome, though. Welcome to the the, the subscriber side of the channel. Thank you, my man. And uh, Jay Cordoba, 2003. Uh, and DJ Ghostface. Welcome to the family, guys. Welcome to the college football family. Thank you, Nick. Eric says, Nick Satan. Yeah, I wouldn't even say his name or the A word on this channel. I wouldn't even say it. So we'll, okay, so now now that we know this, because I think there are more people here than there were earlier, so I'm gonna ask again. We'll cover, I'm sorry if you were already here and we've already covered this, just ignore me or or mute me for a few minutes while we talk about this again, because I, I value my family's input, which is you guys, whether you like it or not, your family. So I value your input. We talked about this the other night, and I know it's going to get a big debate started. I know it's going to get a big one started. Given that Dan Enos is the hire, because when we talked about this, we didn't know that. Given that Dan Enos is the hire, does that change your mind? Do you want Jalen Hurts now? I know we already touched on it, but don't hate me. I'm going to sit back and just look at the comment section for a minute and drink my drink now that I've put it out there. For anyone who said no, has it changed your mind now that it, we're bringing in a coach who has worked with Jalen Hurts? Do you want him on the squad? I'm gonna I'm ask one more time. Um, one more time. Don't hate me. I would like to see why not Slim Shady. I, I'm I'm not trying to uh uh call you out specifically I, I value your opinion that that's why i'm caught why i'm asking why why you don't because uh, I, I didn't get to hear your argument for why you you don't want him. there there's some very valid arguments for wanting him and some very valid arguments uh for wanting him and for not wanting him uh, and i just want to see what you guys think i want to see why you don't want him i've spoken my piece on it i've made it known why I do or don't want him. We, we could take calls and talk about it, absolutely. We could absolutely take calls and talk about it.
Okay, so people are saying the one one and done. Do you want to call Slim Shady? I'll take your call if you want to call. Woo! Man, this is strong tonight. Glenn says one and done is fine. Some people are fine with that. Some people are fine with the one and done. Uh, Slim Shady, what is your area code? Don't I, You already know the drill, so don't put your whole phone number in here. But what's your area code so I know which phone call to take? Clove Kane says, not a smart college business move, in my opinion. I, I, I mean, I, I see the argument. I see the argument. Uh, what is 901? Okay, okay. Let me make sure. Let me get the phone line opened up. Hold on just a second. Um, I'm curious. I'm curious to see um, your argument here. Uh, like I said, I'm not trying to call anyone out. Uh, I just I want to see everyone's opinion. Um, that's what we're here for. To talk canes. Uh, we all just here. Okay, here's here's the last thing that I'll say about that uh, from me. I think we can all agree that we might disagree on players and and schemes and different things like that. But at the end of the day, we all just want the canes to get back to winning games. Am I right? Can I get a yes? in the chat we all just want to get back to winning and we're all willing to do whatever it takes we just have different opinions on how to get there i think we can all agree on that as as a college football family miami hurricanes family we want to get back to winning games that's what we want to do okay it should be open my man uh slim shady if uh you want to call in um and I can address you differently if you would prefer. I don't know if you prefer for people to call you Slim Shady or if you go by a, 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 your actual name. I'm not sure. Um, so let's get you on the line, my man. Yo, how's it going? We got Slim Shady on the line. What's going on, Coop? What's going on, man? So uh, let, let, let's hear. I, I'm curious. I, I hope you don't take it the wrong way that I, I'm not trying to call you out or anything on it. I, I value your input, so I want to see your side of the argument because I would say honestly I'm seeing about 80 to 90 percent of Canes fans are I'm sure as you've seen are pulling for Jalen everywhere they're, they're posting it everywhere so I want to see someone's side of the argument who does not want Jalen. Uh, hey I don't have a problem being called out it's fine with me um <laughs> I be perfectly honest with you it, it's it's more than just one thing okay uh you know number one I don't want a one and done quarterback Period. That's understandable. Number two, I think if you bring in a guy like Jalen Hurts, who, let's be honest, this offensive coordinator was his quarterback's coach at Alabama and was going to be the offensive coordinator this coming up year at Alabama, it's not going to be a fair and open quarterback competition. It's just not. Yeah, and I think – and we we touched on that a little as far as – I, I don't think Jalen is interested in coming somewhere and sitting. Uh, I mean, I just it doesn't make sense to me. Maybe I'm wrong, but kind of basically what you said, it, it, if he's going somewhere, he's he, he's getting the green light to be taking snaps yeah. uh, on the first game of the season. Right. And if you bring him in, fine. He's gone after 2019. Now there's a very real possibility it can cost you two other quarterbacks with three four years of eligibility left. So do you want one good year or maybe one so-so year and then some very good years for the next four to seven years? So you're, you're looking at it as more of a, a look long-term solution by exactly. not having him, more of the building process with the guys we got. I got you. So then are you opposed at all to, I, I don't know if, if, if you want to get on this subject or not, but are you opposed to people talking about the, the Tate Martell uh, from Ohio State? I haven't seen a whole lot of Tate Martell outside of, you know, some highlights that were posted when he was recruited. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, he didn't play this, this year at Ohio State. Right. Um, to where do you? But here's I'm the thing. Sorry, you have a guy in Tate Martell who is talking about transferring because he's running away from a quarterback competition with Justin Fields at Ohio State. Yeah, I mean, you, you can't deny that. That's very true. So, I mean, is he going to want to come to Miami and compete against 
Jalen, I mean, not Jalen, uh, Jaron Williams and uh, Perry. It's true. I mean, and I know a lot of people are down on Perry, but I, and I've said this a hundred times this year, the way Mark Rick handled quarterbacks, when you swap quarterbacks every three or four games, no quarterback is going to look good. Yeah, I, I'm not. I'm not for the whole swapping quarterbacks around and stuff, and just always trying to go with see who's got the hot hand. Uh, I, I don't think it works very well. No, I think their best bet is to pick up that quarterback Plumley, who all he said was, and my, he was considering Miami. All he said he was waiting to see is who they hired as an offensive coordinator. Yeah, I, th- I think so a lot of people were in that same boat. They work. They work. Um, but you can't blame them with, like, with what we dealt with this last season. I mean, I, I don't I don't. No, you can't. That. Not at all. I don't either. But here's my thing. Here goes another four-star quarterback. That would give you three four-star quarterbacks on the mm-hmm. roster, plus Cade Weldon. Maybe he'll redshirt, but I say Manny should make it an open competition between those four. So you have four quarterbacks with the ability to do it. Let them show what they've got. Because I don't think Perry's been really given the shot to show what he can do. No, I will agree that some people will disagree with me on this, but I do think that when a lot of the switching was going on, most of the time Perry was put in uh, bad situations. I do agree that he was put in a spot where he it was up to him to make this miraculous comeback. And it it, it didn't – it didn't give people a, a good view of of what he can actually do. Uh, so I I don't know. I'm uh, either way. Like you said, I am. I do agree that it does have to be open competition. Period. Even if the, even if Jalen did come in or or Martell or the Plumley guy, anybody, no matter what, it should always be open competition. Period. Yeah, and I agree with that. And here's one thing nobody's taken into consideration: Jalen Hurt looks good behind Alabama's offensive line that probably has easily four players that are going to start in the NFL day one. That's true. Does Miami have that offensive line? No, they don't. Not right now, we don't, no. And, and I mean, let's be perfectly honest. Miami's offense, and this is something, this is an argument me and Alonzo have gotten into several times because he doesn't agree with it. <laughs> Miami's offensive line has been bad, period. Yeah. I mean, they've shown flashes at times when they're good, but for the most part, it's been a bad unit. That's why I like the hire uh, uh, of Butch from Tampa Bay, because I'm a Tampa Bay fan as well. That's my NFL team. So I saw what he did year one coming into Tampa Bay. Yeah, so you're pretty you know, going, Yeah. Oh, yeah, he was great. I mean, year one, he come into Tampa Bay. His first season, they went from the 29th-ranked offensive line to, uh, I think, that year – uh, uh, I'm having a brain fart now. Skip it. It's I don't I keep up with Tampa Bay, name. so I, I'll believe I you. Did, yeah, <laughs> it, it, I mean they had they had the third best rushing attack in the NFL that year. I mean that's pretty. You're I, not going to have a good rushing attack by, with a bad O line. So do you think? Because this is something that I find very intriguing when I ask other people this. It, it, do you think that it's an it, a, a is it a coaching issue with the O line? Is it a talent issue? Is it a size issue? Is it a little bit of everything? What what do you what do you think is going on with that O line unit? With everything I've heard, you know, coming coming out of Miami this year, it's been a combination between Stacy Searles, bad coaching, and the strength and conditioning coach, uh, Gus Felder. Yep. Because there are times those boys just got overpowered. Yeah. They did, yeah. They just got ran over, for sure. And, I mean, everybody wants them to go out west and get the bigger linemen. Okay, I've I've watched Miami Hurricanes football my whole life. I was born in 1988. 2001, perfect example. 2001, they had Nebraska's team and Miami's team on the Jay Leno show. They took the biggest Nebraska lineman, put him up there with Miami's biggest lineman. Uh-huh. No comparison. Nebraska boys were bigger all day long. Huh, I've never but seen how that. how bad did they get beat? Yes, sir. Huh. That's interesting. You don't have you don't have to have the bigger linemen to be better. 
They just have to. They just have to be better coached and just as strong. That's true. I I act. I fully agree with that. I cannot argue with, argue with you on that. I do agree with that. Um, technique and strength uh, make a big difference. So I mean, that's just that's my opinion. I mean, this run back coach I don't a whole lot about. I mean, just some quick Google searches. You know, he's produced a thousand, multiple thousand-yard rushers. He's produced 12, 1,300-yard rushers in seasons. And I think he will recruit fine in his hometown, which is exactly what you want. It helps, yeah, because we, we've struggled a little bit with that, um, with keeping people at home and stuff. Uh, so well, and, and you, can't, you can't put that all on the coaches either. People say Mike Rumpf is a bad recruiter. Before Mike Rump come there, he was a high school coach in, in Miami. People forget that. They, they plucked him from a high school in Miami to coach uh, backs there. But to think he doesn't have the connections in Miami, he's just having a hard time after a 7-6 and six season yeah. getting to come to Miami, which he – Yeah, I mean, you you got to think of a mindset of uh, – 16, 17, 18 year old kid. I mean, when when the football team is losing and and we're sucking it up, who who really wants to come here? Unless that was just your dream in the first place, you always wanted to be a cane. I mean, yeah, guys like Al Blades Jr. He's gonna come, no question just, about it. Just about no matter what. Yeah, uh, guys like Trajan Bandy, he's gonna come no matter what. A lot of people don't know this. That's Sean Taylor's nephew. Oh, okay. I I didn't know that. Yeah, that's he's gonna come no matter what. But getting guys, I mean, let's let's not forget, you know, 2018 class was top ten in the country. Got some of the best safeties and backs in the country in that class. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it I, wasn't that long ago. <laughs> hey, I I really appreciate you calling in, Slim Shady. I've wanted to get you on the show. I don't have I have you called in here before? or Is this the first time? I, I think this is the first time just because I have problems getting notifications the same as everybody else. Gotcha. Oh, yeah. I just I couldn't remember. Um, there was somebody. It was you or 786 or, or somebody that had called in recently. I couldn't remember if it was you or somebody else. So um, Yeah, and a lot of times, too, you come on and, and you know, you come on earlier in the day. And I, yeah, I, I do. I'm I a truck do. driver, so I, t- I tend to be working. Oh, gotcha. Gotcha. Well, I, I appreciate your input, man. I, I wanted to hear it from someone uh, who didn't want Jalen Hurts, and of course talking about some of the other stuff. So I appreciate your input. We'll we'll see what uh, I, I notice. Some people agree with you, some people don't in chat. So we'll we'll continue to talk about it. And uh, I I really do appreciate you taking time to call in, man. Yes, sir. All right, thanks. Have a good night, Slim Shady. All right, you too. All right, bye bye. This is what it take. We can take some more calls if you guys want to. Help me. We don't need Jalen. Our QBs need some coaching and development. And Michelle McPhee, thank you for that $1.99. And Bobby Hemphill, thank you for that $5 donation as well. How's it going? What's good, Coop? What's going on, man? Yep. Kane's basketball caught that W today. That's oh, yeah. Up. Yeah, I saw that against Wake. Yep. Finally, feel, feel, it feels good to get a W finally. Uh, it's been a while, especially, you know, all those ACC woes that they've had. Yep. You know Chris likes on 14 for 14 from free throws today. That's crazy. Like, likes is my man. Man, I, I sympathize with him. I shorties, man. Yeah, but um, about Jalen Hurts, yeah. I'm all for him coming. All right, and what what, what is it that – that you is there a particular reason that makes you want him to come to Miami? Is it just you think that he's he's that talented, or that I just I'm looking for people to elaborate on why they do or don't want him? Diaz said it best: the more QBs you have, the more competition they get. Because I, I want everybody to get to speak their their piece on it, and then uh, just kind of I'm honest. I'll be honest with you: I'm just kind of looking at the chat just to see what people think if they agree or disagree with you. To be honest. I think Jalen Hurts could be a starter next year. It could be Jaron. It could be, could be Batosi. Could be Weldon. Don't know, but as many QBs as you can get, the better. All right, yeah. I mean, have I, depth. I, I'm, I'm honestly seeing both sides. It's really hard for me because, you know, people, people want me to choose a side. They want me to say yes or no. 
And when I hear yep. both sides, everybody's making some pretty good arguments for both ways, to be honest. Yeah. And um, don't forget, he's also a four- or five-star quarterback. I'm not really sure which, but coming out of high school, he was fantastic. Don't, like, don't forget, he led Bama to one or two national championships. You can't deny that. Like, I don't understand who wouldn't want that as a player in their program. So you, you are okay with the one and done? That doesn't bother you at all? No, it doesn't doesn't bother me. Do you think that Perry, think do, you, do you think that one of the current QBs would transfer if we do get him and he starts? I think the only QB who would transfer is Cade Walden, but to me that's meaningless. Yeah, I, I don't um, think some some people get mad at me. I, I'm I appreciate Cade Weldon coming to the U. You know, anybody who comes to Miami yeah. sticks it through either way, no matter what. But I don't think that Cade Weldon is that next level quarterback. I don't think so personally. Yeah. Sure, he's good, and he can play for like a lower D one program like FSU or somebody like that. <laughs> he's awful. But um, no, he he's just not my material right now. Gotcha. Yep. Um, <laughs> the, the, here's the thing. I'm finally one and done for this sole reason. Would you have a decent quarterback for four years, or a great quarterback for one year? Nikosi doesn't impress me that much. I'd rather not have him for this year. Help, like, help, just help him get better for next year and just have Jalen ball out for one year. That's, that's interesting. I'm gonna, I said I'm, I, I, I hate that I'm not answering quite as much to what you're saying. I'm mostly looking at chat because I'm just curious to see what everybody thinks about your opinion. Because uh, people, this is something that people, I'm sure as you've seen, are very torn on and very passionate about. No matter which side you're on, you're super passionate about either just – petitioning basically for him to come here and then there's the other people who say heck no we don't want him you know anywhere near Miami agreed and um about Jeff Thomas I've heard several people I've talked to several people today or not an insider or anything just friends yeah say we don't want a quarter huh yeah yeah no I, I was just agreeing with you where you were saying that, that you've heard from people yeah so um I don't want people keep saying oh I don't want a quarter on my team to me, he's not a quitter. He came with he came together with Mark Rick, and we had like a mutual agreement. Yeah, I don't think he's a quitter. I think I, he's a great player. I agree. I don't think necessarily that that JT is a quitter. It's one of those things. If you're in a position where if he really actually did not get along very well with Rick or Duggins, if they really just butted heads and clashed, and, and I mean, I I think it actually might have been a smarter move for him to get away from Miami because there could have been more mm -hmm. serious issues that went on, you know, during the season as he stayed here. Uh, so I don't necessarily yeah. consider him a quitter either for that. Yeah, like I I actually met Duggins once before he came to my high school. Mm -hmm. So look at um one of our this players what who he ended up not getting, but he's still a good guy. I can't I'm say sorry about your helmet. About and if he gets Jeff hurt Thomas and he's out for the season, but to me he'll take a good guy. Um, I would love Jeff Thomas to be back in the program. I just think it's doubtful. Yep, yep. I'm perfectly fine with giving him a, a second chance, most definitely. Yeah. But yet again, we thought it was doubtful for Diaz to come back, and he did. <laughs> yeah, I, no. I listen at this point. At this point, man, I am. Yeah. I am. Everything's up for grabs. Everything's up in the air. I, after. <laughs> After I said, there's no way Diaz comes back. He's already the head coach at Temple. I said, there's no way that Rick quits or retires because he's too stubborn and he's you know already had an extension. After all this stuff's happened, I, anything can happen. I, I ain't putting anything – everything's up in the air. Yep, but finally I'm just going to let you get to a couple other guys. At the end of the day, this all season going to be insane and it's just the beginning of the ride. Yep, it, it's going to get crazy. People think it's crazy right now. Just this wait till spring and stuff hits and we start seeing some you. practices and stuff. Sorry, it's going to get insane. Number to call in? Yep, absolutely. All right. Good. Um, Have a good one. I, I always appreciate you calling in, man. All right, bye. All right, bye-bye. Let me read a couple of these donations real quick. I don't want you guys to think that I missed them. Uh, Rod G also coming through uh, with the $2 donation. And Beast Mode, can, uh, Rod G says, and if he gets hurt and he's out for the season, Another another valid point, Rod G. Another valid point. Uh, Beast Mode Kane as well. Coming through with a dollar ninety nine says number to call in. Beast Mode Kane, it is this number right here. 865-229-4131. Call in and voice your opinion on this. Let's talk it out. Okay, I'll get the phone line back on. 
Sorry if you were trying to call in, but I, I do have it back on. Uh, there we go. All right, looks like we've got a 603 on the line. Who do we have calling in? Yo, hey, Cooper. Who, who do we have on the line? ZJ13, Goat. What's going on, Goat? Uh, what, what, or what do you want to talk about? Do you want, are you calling in about the Jalen Hurts, the quarterback situation? Yeah. Uh, yeah, right. I just like I just like to say to your entire chat, Jalen Hurts is not going to transfer to Miami yet. You don't think so? Where do you think he's going to go? I don't know, but I know it's not going to be Miami. Yeah. Not Miami. We'll see, man. I it's going to be. I think he's going to make a move soon. I, I don't think yeah. he'll wait a real long time. I, I think he'll make a move soon. Yep. Anyway, I'm trying to be as quiet as possible so that I don't make anybody up in my house. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. Uh, you know, I, I I appreciate the input, man. I, I'm gonna look at chat. We're, we're, we're going to see what people were saying about your opinion. See if they this agree or disagree. Because Jalen has not come to the team like The Gators Miami are full yet. of croc. This guy can't talk. Yeah, we'll see We'll see if people agree with you or not, my man. It's definitely uh, <laughs> everybody's debating it, man. But I, I appreciate you calling in, bro. Yo, and also i just like to say, say I can't wait to live stream the game late though tonight. Though. No problem, man. I appreciate you hanging out, though. You know I appreciate it, bro. See, see ya. Yep. Yeah, have a good one. Have a good one, Goat. You too. Thank you, man. Hey, I just let everybody know. I know you guys are putting different comments and stuff in there. Hey, it's uh free for anyone to call in. Anybody can call in, man. Uh, DJ coming through with the dollar ninety nine says the Gators are full of croc. This guy can't talk. Uh, we're gonna do. I got some interesting videos coming up about the Gators. Listen. We're going to go on a hunt for some gator meat. We're going to do some crazy stuff. It's going to be lit. Trust me. Um, how do you donate? Uh, Huff Huff, you just press the little money symbol uh, in the chat. We have four people trying to call in at the same time. I'm just going to pick a random one. Don't get mad. Don't hate me. All right. Looks like we've got 561. Uh, who do we have on the line? Uh, this is Beast Mode Caden calling from West Palm Beach, Florida. What's going on, Beast Mode? Hey, I appreciate that dollar ninety nine donation, my friend. No problem, no problem. Yeah, I was just talking about um, you know, Jalen Hurts. Uh, you know, I went out to the I went out to Yankee Stadium to watch our Canes play a lot to New York. Ooh, that you know, would have been a tough trip, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was a nice stadium, I'll tell you that. And those Wisconsin fans are pretty nice, I'll tell you. They didn't uh, rub it in too bad. Okay, but, so you're, um, not, you know, you're not being sarcastic. You mean really? They're they're actually kind of nice. Really? No, they did. Okay, okay. They, they were nice. Gotcha. They were nice. They were they were like, ah, oh, you know, at least you get to see a nice stadium or whatever. But you know about about Jalen Hurts in Miami. You know, I've been a Kane fan for as long as I can remember. And you know, winning kids want to play for a winner. And if we get Jalen Hurts, he knows the system. We're gonna win right away. And with winning comes better recruiting. It's a it's a the domino effect. So. And these other guys, like you see in the NFL all the time, they could they could take a year and learn the system, and then also they learn how to prepare like a champion. Because Jalen Hurts played for a championship team, he led them there. He knows how to prepare. He knows how to to, to prepare like champions, and that's what some of these guys have to learn. You know what I mean? So we're getting we're getting all these weapons, and we have all these weapons around them. But yeah, our offensive line isn't as good as Alabama's. But you know what? I'd rather have Jalen Hurts running around with a not so good offensive line than one of our guys because he knows the system a little better. So, you, so I you, think it'll. You actually bring up a point that I haven't seen many people make about mentioning uh, it affecting potential recruiting because it could for sure mean winning more games uh, with yeah, him taking the snaps. Yeah, he knows the system. It's less less learning curve. We come in and we. We knock off Florida right away, who's like the up and coming team in Florida, and we come yeah, in and we knock are. them off. It's, it's gonna it's gonna go crazy. It's it's winning recruiting battles are on the fence between Florida, Florida State, Miami. You got you know winning winning. All you gotta do is win, and kids want to play for a winner. And yeah, the, just like those kids that want to stay home because it's the U, but. When you got other teams that are that are winning, winning helps. I mean, yeah, it's kind of like uh, oh, shoot, I'm going blank. 
There, there was that movie where they say if you build it, they will come. It was like building a baseball yeah. field. And if, if, if yeah, you field win, of dreams. If, field if of you, dreams. If you win, they will come. That's all you got to do. It'll t- everything it's will true. take care of yeah. itself. I mean, how, I mean, how hard is it to sell a team that's winning? I mean, you know, you 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 beat Florida. You beat you know you beat Florida State. You know, you knock off all these teams. You get into a good bowl game. This is what it And takes. it just it builds that momentum and recruiting. It's, it's a lot. It's a lot easier to Dollar. sell a program that you know what is winning. I, not like oh yeah, yeah. I I kind of wonder sometimes with schools like Alabama and stuff. I'm like, did they even have to go out and try to yeah, reach out a, to people because they're probably waiting in line, reaching out to them, waiting to hear back from Alabama yeah, because they're a, they're ready to go. A, correct. It's a machine. I mean, you see, like you see sometimes, like you know, we offered a a two star recruit or or a one or a three. You know, like you look at Alabama, they got five star, four star, four star, five star. I mean. You know, if you're a three star, like you better hope like you're coming off injury, and that's why you're only rated a three star. But I mean, it's just a machine, you know, and, and quality in, quality out. You know, I mean, you so, see these guys. A lot of these guys are grown men. So the one and done with Jalen Hurts does not bother you. Not at all. Okay. Not at all. If he can, I'm, if he I'm, can help us win, let us win, and he'll show our guys how to prepare take. like champions because he played on a. The, the number one ranked team in the country Perry for a few will years. Win so. with a real it is what it is. Coach. Yeah, I mean, it, it is one of those things. Uh, I mean, he could mentor the younger guys. Um, yeah. I mean, that that yeah. that that is another a valid point. Again, I keep telling everybody it's hard for me to because people want me to say one way or the other, and I I, I see honestly both sides of it. I really do. Uh, and you guys are making some really valid points, trying to trying to swing both ways, man. Yep. All right. Well, I'll let you take some other calls. Just wanted to put my two cents in, and let's go, Kane. Absolutely, I appreciate, it, man. And I actually, I was going to ask real quick: Are you new to the channel? I haven't seen your name very uh, often. Yes, yes. I think. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I got you on the board because you donated the other night, I believe. Uh, so you're back on the correct, board. Correct. Correct. Uh, but yeah, if, if you're yeah, somewhat correct. new, hey, I, I hope you enjoy your time here, man, because we just have a good time over here. I do. I do, and I'm gonna. I'm going to enjoy it with you when we're kicking everybody's ass on the field. <laughs> Most definitely. Yep. I, I appreciate you calling in, my man. Have a good weekend. All right. Thanks, man. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. So I'm noticing something. I'm noticing something. You guys are super passionate about this Jalen Hurts argument. Uh, let me address a couple of these donations real quick, guys. I'm going to shut up the phone line for just a second. Um, uh, Richard Renfro with the $1.99 donation. Thank you for that, my friend. Thank you for that donation. Uh, Slim Shady Canes coming through with a $3.05 donation. Don't think I don't notice that, bro. I, I, I know that you did it on purpose, but with the three oh five, dollars uh, says Perry will win with a real QB coach. Uh, a lot of people are also arguing that, Slim Shady. I appreciate that donation, my friend. And Will P has just subscribed to the channel. Thank you for joining the family, my man. I hope you enjoy your time here. Y'all are delusional. We're 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 passionate. Uh, we are. We we could argue Miami Hurricanes literally all day, all day. All right. So it looks like we've got eight five zero area code on the line. Who do we have on the phone? Hey, uh, this is Cannon from the chat. What's going on, man? Uh, not much. I just wanted to just first of all shout out to your channel. It's been a huge just. Uh, impression it's been amazing to me how you know you built this community here of Canes fans and I've really enjoyed my time here and I decided to start my own channel too I just I love it man nice. I feel okay. it I, I feel it, it. Yeah. this is the year uh the, go ahead before we start the the convo what 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 type of channel is this is it Miami Hurricanes uh yeah it's okay. Miami Hurricanes go ahead called Miami Hurricanes time go ahead and shout out your channel real quick bro Okay, cool. Sure. Yeah, I'll drop it in the chat. But yeah, y'all just okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, just do that. I'll approve it's just it. It's called it, Miami it. Hurricanes Time. Miami Hurricanes yeah. Time or Prime? Time. Time. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. I'll check it out. I'll sub to it after we're done here. Uh, link it in the chat when we get off the phone. YouTube tries to block links, uh, but I'll approve it when you put it up. Okay. Yeah, appreciate that. Sure. Yeah, no problem. Sure. Man. So, uh, are you are you wanting to talk about uh, the Jalen Hurts situation? Yeah, I was actually think about Jeff Thomas coming over because okay, okay. I mean there's no denial of his talent but think about it he, he still has that kind of you know odd rub with 
team, and, you know, I would change the chemistry. I mean, I'd love to see Hurts throwing bombs to Thomas all year, but, you know. So you were saying, and I'm sorry, the, the phone cut out a little bit on you there. You were saying he has chemistry with who? I'd love to see Jalen Hurts throwing some bombs to oh, Thomas, but gotcha, I gotcha. wonder if we want him back, whereas, you know, he kind of rubbed the team oddly when he left that way, you know? Yeah, and I... I this is what it takes. It's kind of hard to tell for me. To you. On a, I'm sorry your helmet. Let's get back sorry, in the reading Sorry, it's reading out this donation real quick. Jalen, thumbs up. We good. There we go, okay. And this I'll address that donation. Takes. Don't worry, guys. Uh, to where to sorry, you. man. We, there's so much I'm going on and going helmet. off at the moment. Go for it. Uh, but a, a lot of the players, I, I don't know. It, it might have some of the players. Um, there are a lot of the players who really just act like they just miss Jeff Thomas. Um, I know a yeah. lot of them were, were tweeting out uh, a bunch of, you know, crying emojis and stuff every time he gets mentioned. When people were first mentioning him coming back, they were tweeting out and putting out, you know, don't mess with my emotions. I miss my boy JT and stuff like that. So I, I think a hmm. lot of them actually uh, kind of just miss him. Honestly, I, and I, I could be wrong. You could you could be right on that, too. I, I don't I don't know for sure. You know, like I said, I only talked to like two players on the team. Uh, and they're not real, mm -hmm. you know, buddy buddy with him or anything. Uh, so that I mean, right. that, is, that is definitely a possibility, though. Right, for sure, for sure. But so it'd be you, interesting you, to see. If... So, are you for JT coming back to the squad, though? Like, you would be on board with him coming back to the team? I would be. I'd love to see that because it puts some pressure on the fresh uh, new guys that are, you know, still learning the positions to practice harder and train harder to beat him out. You know. Yeah. Whether they start or not, they'd be prepared when he leaves to be, you know, just dominant. Yep. Yep. As I said, I'm I'm fully on board with it. Uh, I say just just as long as they sit down with him and he seems serious about cracking down with because again, you know, everybody said he had some issues with grades and some stuff with classes and stuff. As long as he's willing to crack down uh, on that, take it serious, take football serious. I say absolutely welcome him back with open arms. That that's my opinion. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But I heard that Miami Herald says it's up to Diaz to say yes or no, and I don't know how factual that is, but yeah, I it's know. interesting. I, I keep seeing people say that too. Um, we, we'll see. I don't think – because he never really seemed to have any issues or beef with Diaz. Obviously, Diaz on the other mm -hmm. side of the ball was, you know, being the defensive coordinator. But I I don't know. I don't know what Diaz would do in this situation because uh, I know he wants to get the program off – you know, to a good start because, I mean, he's the new head coach. Uh, I, he wants to run a tight program, good, clean program. If you, like I said before, if you take him back, you are also, you know, opening that up to people saying, well, how come you won't take this guy back? How come you won't consider this guy? So all that does play a part. All that comes into play if he does that. So we'll see. Right. We'll see. It's right. going to be interesting. This it, things. The crazy thing about being a Miami fan right now is a lot of schools are, oh, man, I'm – I'm I'm itching for us to get to talk football again at Miami as Miami <laughs> fans. It's we're it, oh, things man. are just exploding right now. So. It's a whirlwind. We're the hot topic for sure. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And I love that. And it's all positive. It's all positive so far. Yep. Yep. Definitely. But uh, yeah, I, I appreciate your input on that, man. I think this was probably was this your first time calling in. It was. It was. Gotcha. Gotcha. So yeah, I appreciate it, my man. And uh, I'm not trying to cut you off. If there's any other points or anything you want to say. Uh, feel free to, to speak your piece now. Uh, otherwise, we'll continue to take some more calls, man. Yeah, go ahead take some other calls, but I'm just interested to hear your input on the running backs uh, hire because, you know, it seems like he doesn't have big-level experience, but he's been in the business for a while with the high schools. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I, as soon as we hang up here, I'll touch on it uh, a little bit. I did yeah. talk a little bit about it earlier, but there weren't as many people in here. I think we maybe had 500, no, not Paul. 500, not, we had like 50 people. And now we're around 200. I got so, you. so I'll, I'll I got touch you. on it again. I'll touch on it again. For you. sure. Well, I appreciate your time, Coop, and thanks yeah. so much. Thanks for calling in, man. Uh, right, go bye Kings. Bye-bye. Yeah. Thanks, man. All right, let me address some of these donos real quick. The phone line is cut off for a second. Don't, don't, don't get mad. Don't get mad. Okay. Uh, yeah, Huff Huff, uh, you said that you donated to Patreon. You don't see your donation. Uh, I'm sorry, man. It, it doesn't pop up for the Patreon stuff. If you did, Huff Huff, thank you for that, my friend. Donations, as you guys know, are never required. You don't have to show support on Patreon, but thank you for all those that do. And Huff Huff, thank you for that, my man. I want to make sure that you do get some type of um, 
notification from me if it doesn't pop up a notification somewhere on the screen. So thank thank you for that support, Huff Huff. Uh, and uh, let's see, the phone line's cut off for a second, so hang on for just a moment. And I did see Russell was in the chat. Are you still here, Russell? For those of you who don't know, Russell, in the chat, uh, I actually found out that he lives less than 30 minutes from me here where I live in East Tennessee. So we actually met up on Friday afternoon and had lunch together. How crazy is that? A Miami Hurricanes fan that lived around 30 minutes away from me and he said, hey, let's just meet up and have lunch. And I said, hey, let's do it. And we met up on Friday and had lunch. It's awesome. My, Miami Hurricanes fans, man, we're something else. Uh, we're all family, man. Uh, so I wanted to address the new, or, uh, the new subs and donations. Will P, thank you uh, for the subscription. Welcome to the family, my man. And uh, Baya or Baya Juan 41 this is what Films. It takes. Thank you. Welcome to the family, to man. To you on the side of your helmet. Love the show. Flexed biceps, dark skin tone. Flexed biceps, dark skin tone. Flexed biceps, dark skin tone. It reads those messages so weird sometimes. Uh, Liberty City Boy 1. Man, Liberty City Boy 1 has been around on my channel for a long time. Thank you for that $2 donation, my friend. Thank you for that. With hitting us with the flex, man. Thank you for that $2. Uh, Noel Daddy 42 has also subscribed. Uh, we're attracting all sorts of attention. Thank you for that, man. And uh, Anthony uh, Onorado, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name, man. Thank you for that $2 donation. And uh, Kelly Britton as well, coming through with $1.99, says, let's get back on winning track. Jalen with a thumbs up. So Kelly Britton is all for Jalen. Uh, coming back, or not coming back, coming over to the U. And uh, th things are blowing up right now. Canes fans are so passionate about this. Um, Coop, did you get my order? I did, Raji. Uh, your order has been submitted uh, for the, the T-shirt. Uh, Huff Huff says, where the donation for the channel then, bro? Uh, I'll show you, uh, just because you are asking here, uh, when you are watching this stream, I'm going to break a fourth wall here real quick and uh, let me know if i missed your donation or your sub i want to make sure you do get uh, thanked for that so just let me know if i miss it guys there's a lot going on at the moment if you are watching the stream look this is going to be weird i'm showing you guys yourself down here in the chat all you have to do and I, i'm he's he's asking uh so i'm going to show him huff huff was asking uh, you click this little money symbol you click that money symbol right there where do you go to chat if you click that little money symbol um, you can donate and it pops up right here on the screen and reads your message. You can put a custom message. Uh, donations are never required though. Um, I just enjoy hanging out, company of my college football family, Miami Hurricanes fans. But if you want it to be read aloud and pop up, that's how you do it. Um, you guys are killing it tonight, man. I mean, uh, you guys are so passionate about if you want Jalen. Uh, Man. Man. So let's see. We'll, we'll continue to take some phone calls. Uh, I'm just going to pick one. We've got three three or four this people calling in at the same time. To where do you on the side of your helmet? Wanted to see my post. Raji, thank you, my man. Thank you for that $2 donation. And Randy Noel, welcome to the family, my friend. I'm just going to pick one. I'm just going to pick one. All right, looks like we got uh, 540 area code on the line. Uh, who do we have on the phone? Coop, it's the purveyor of the turnover chain, brother. What's going on, man? <laughs> What's going on? Uh, we're just chilling, trying to keep up with all these notifications. Us Canes fans, uh, man, we're, we're, uh, we love debating this Jalen Hurts stuff, man. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, I can tell. I mean, there's several people calling while you're talking, trying to talk to other callers and Everybody's wanting a piece of coop. Yep, yep. So uh, let's uh, let's hear it, man. I don't know exactly. I just spit everywhere. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I want to know what you're thinking. I want to know what you're thinking about the the Jalen Hurts situation. I I'm, I'm am gonna all sit, for I'm gonna, it. I'm gonna sit back and let you do some talking for a second. All right. <laughs> uh, no, I, I'm totally all for it. Um, and like um, Slim Shetty touched on, I mean the recruiting possibilities through that, it's just going to be endless. You bring somebody like Hertz over and who knows, you know, he may be pulling some, uh, recruits that are, you know, already committed to Alabama. They might flip as well. 
It's a possibility, so, and I, I won't lie, I really had not – makes me sound like I'm a, a bad football fan. I hadn't really <laughs> considered the effect on recruiting potential. I mean, with winning, of course, I'd consider that, but not just as far as just him in general. Uh, I didn't really kind of wait, put that option in there uh, or think about the effect that it could have necessarily. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's all facets of the game, whether it's, you know, on the field or behind behind closed doors, you know, it's going to affect some way or another to where do you as far as the recruiting I'm goes. I'm an old so, fan uh, and oh, I sorry, wish we had second. someone as informative as you, sir. Keep up the great work. <laughs> I, have to, I have to address this just real quick. Uh, because oh, you good, buddy. Noel Daddy Forty Two just donated five dollars and says, "I'm a Noel fan, and I wish we had someone as informative as you, sir. Keep up the great work." No, Noel Daddy Forty Two. Look, that's what it's all about, man. Ninety, probably ninety-five percent of us in here are Miami Hurricanes fans, but uh, we are, we do all just enjoy college football in general. Uh, so, thank you for that five dollar donation, my friend. You didn't have to do that. Thank you for that, bro. And sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, man. I just wanted to address that because. Uh, Having FSU fans come in and hang out, that's that's cool, man. Like I said, we're the everybody's talking about Miami right now. Yes, sir. Well thank you, No. Man, hey, hey, you're part of the family, whether you know, you might be the the step cousin over there, but hey, we yeah. still such hey, as a family. Hey. We well we welcome everybody, college football fans in general, most definitely. Now again, like <laughs> like we always say, man, on game day, all right, listen, you, you gotta uh you gotta realize that some things might get said, but Afterwards, I'm going to shake your hand and say, you know, good game, win or loss is what it is. Uh, it so, is. It so, is. So leave, the, it all, leave it all on the field. Yep. Yeah, so, like, why I keep asking everybody that. So, the one and done with Jalen Hurts does not bother you. You're not worried about him only being a one and done coming in one season, and we know he's gone. That doesn't bother you. No, because the, here's one of the main this reasons why, did. and this already been touched so on by several people. On the side of your uh, all is fans he are already knows the system. That's going to be a leg up. The other guys are not going to know the system. They're not going to get it fully grasped by that time. On the side of your helmet. And I'm just, I'm, you know, I mean, I, you know, Nikosi has a lot of talent, but I just don't think he's, I don't think he can stay out of trouble enough to be, I don't know, you know, a major this mark into the um, college world. To where do you? I see what you're saying. Your and honestly, it's the, not a rebuild; it's a reboot. Bring in Jalen. <laughs> some of these messages are cracking me up. Um, <laughs> with, with Perry, honestly, I know some people might agree or disagree with me. I honestly don't care about the money thing that he did. Um, that doesn't bother me at all. Uh, just because I've been 18, 19, 20 years old before, I know the first time that I sold the, I had a, a '97 Ford Mustang, and I loved that thing. But I, I finally sold it, and I got like. Fifteen hundred dollars, but you know, as a, a seventeen-year-old, I thought I was hot stuff, man. So you know, I was, I was taking pictures. You know, I got it all in like twenty-dollar bills, so I could take pictures and put it on Facebook. You know, and all this stuff. So that really doesn't bother me that much. I do realize that as a QB, you're kind of looked at as a leader, whether you want to be one or not. You're kind of looked at as one. Uh, so yeah. I, I think you have to try to portray a good image uh, when, when you're in that type of position. Uh, but I, I honestly, it comes down to people hate me for saying this. I'm just going to say it. I think, man, it, it, people are going to get so mad at me for saying this. I, <laughs> I, I, I think that your social media stuff should be off when you're uh, – maybe it doesn't have to be the whole time you're a college athlete because it's kind of unfair. I know it sucks. But it, look at all these issues that it causes – for players and people and you have to realize that they're kids so they're going to post some stupid stuff on there sometimes honestly stuff that probably when they get older when they're 24 25 26 years old they're going to look back and say wow i really probably shouldn't have put that up there i probably just should have focused on you know football or baseball basketball whatever because now i'm trying to get in the nfl or the nba and all they're talking about is that tweet i put out of me flashing money you know four years ago or something so well i think it would be easier if they either just banned it either during the, the season when, when it's ongoing or just all together. I'm serious, and people hate me for saying This that. is what it takes. Well, Coop, I'm, a, I'm with you 110%. Yeah, it's just, it, it, it would solve some issues that come up and some things that happen that would not, it, it wouldn't be an issue because it's, it's kids affecting their lives later on and they're, they just don't really realize it or think about it at the time. And like I said, I get it because I've been there. But I think it would be best for everybody involved if that happened. 
Yeah, I have I have one question for you. Okay. And Isn't everybody, college... not to interrupt you, I just one more time, if you don't mind real quick, I just want to let everybody know I will address those donations. Uh, I, I just don't want to in, keep interrupting him. So I'll address the donations in just a moment, just as soon as we get done with this call. So sorry about that. I had to interrupt you one more time. I'm so sorry. Oh, no, you're, okay. Go ahead. You're good, brother. Go ahead. You're you, good. Hey, you've got the floor. you can go ahead and interrupt me all you want because that's <laughs> people showing love to you. I have no problem with that. All right, so hit me with your question. Isn't college where you're supposed to learn to make it in the, in the, in, to the big world, to learn how to be an adult, to learn how to convey yourself as a, you know, a decent human in the society we live in? You could say that, yes, yeah. Then they should understand that this is a part of, social media has to be tamed to be a part of that, you know, to move on. I agree, and that that that's why I think uh, kind of it honestly kind of brings up the point that I made with Jeff Thomas, where I said he, he he what what he needs to do is just buckle down, focus on school, and focus on football because he Jeff Thomas to me I feel like could have a future in the NFL. He could be playing on Sundays, and I would hate to see him ruin that opportunity and him hate and be mad at his past self because he did something you know, like didn't focus on his grades or didn't care about that and just went out and partied or with the Perry stuff, with social media stuff. So exactly, I, I think that, like I said, I, I think that it's it's just what needs to be done because you're doing, you're helping the kid out by doing that. They may be mad at you right now, but later on when they when they do get a little bit older, they're gonna, they're going to come back and thank you for it when they're playing in the NFL and they just signed a, a ten million dollar contract or the NBA and you know they're making four million dollars a year or something like that. They're going to come back and thank you for doing that for them. Oh well, yeah, I, I, and I totally agree. And, uh, and you would you would I mean, come you, into the situation knowing that you you would know that well if I become a college athlete, I'm really not going to get to post on social media that stuff. And I'm sorry, but if you can't sacrifice social media for three or four years so you can play for a college team and have a uh, potential to be a professional athlete, then so be it. I mean, I'm just saying. I totally agree. Um, or make stipulations say, you know, do not do this or do say this or do this. Uh, you know, thank the fans or, you know, keep it moderate. And don't do something that's going to get yourself stupid. Uh, or, or I guess what we're going to have to do is hire, instead of guidance counselors, I don't know if they still have that in college. I know they had it in high school. <laughs> we're going to have to have social media counselors and people who, it's like a team, it looks like you're at, at, at NASA, and they're just sitting at control boards watching all of the kids' <laughs> social media stuff. Oh, no, he just tweeted this. We're going to have to call him into the office, and that's what it's going to have to be all the time. <laughs> that or um, delete it. Delete it. Yeah, delete they, it. They, have, they have override control. They can actually yeah. control your account. That's funny. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm like I, you know, I'm all for you know, Jalen Hurts coming. Uh, the one and done. You know, I'm I'm happy with it. If if we get a national championship, he's going to complain about it. If we get an <laughs> I, ACC I, championship. Yeah, about I mean, it. it's kind of true. Yeah, I don't think t people would be too mad. People would kind of be lifting him up at that point if if, if he's holding the uh, the national championship trophy. Yeah, I mean, he's a proven he's proven that he's a winner, obviously. But like <laughs> like you know, a lot of people have said though, he had a line behind him. What can he do with what he's going to be facing with now? Yeah, and I think that all turn around with you know, with the new office of coordinator and, and, and things of that nature. That's that's all gonna turn around eventually. It could. The biggest thing would be seeing how big of an impact a new O line coach and strength and conditioning coach can really have in this short of a time frame. Because if Jalen comes, he's here this year. And I don't know yeah. how much you can really turn all that around in one season. Cause a lot of people were telling me national championship or bust this year, Coop, and I'm like, I yeah, the natty is the goal every year, but honestly, I don't go into this season expecting that. I think that that's kind of not crazy. Like I said, I, I expect nothing but national championships, but I you you got to give it a little bit of time uh, to get systems in place and, and different schemes and setups and stuff like that. 
because uh, the players that have been there already have a certain mindset in, engraved in their brain, you know, of doing things this way, and, do, and that's all about to change. So you got to give it a little oh, yeah. bit of time. I, I, I totally agree. I said, what do they they say that the uh, the expectancy or is what three years? It's three year three. The third year is the magic number. Yeah, uh, because year so, one is implementing everything. To the year two is working out any little kinks and stuff with it. Year three, you should be completely comfortable with it, and everything should be in place, and everybody should be on the same page. Yeah, I totally agree. And I think, I think you, I think we will actually see a turnaround. I mean, it's not. I don't think it's not going to be an addy turnaround, but it will be. It'd be. It'd be a turnaround enough to notice a good direction that we'll be heading in. We should see an improvement uh, in several different areas for sure. I, I you, totally agree. You can, you can lose a game and still see improvement and still say, wow, we're, we're, we're getting better. We're heading in the right direction, even losing games. People are probably going to disagree with me in the chat, and that's, that's fine. I'm just saying I, I feel like you can still say, wow, we're headed in the right direction, even after losing a game. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and I also heard rumors that, you know, Sam Bruce is begging to come back. I don't know how true that is. Yeah, but. We, we actually – were you here when I first started streaming? No, sure okay. wasn't. Gotcha. Yeah. YouTube w was not sending out notifications today for some reason. Like I was waiting for it. <laughs> everybody that's popped in here has said, I got no notification that you were streaming. So it's been doing yeah. crazy stuff. We were actually looking at Sam Bruce's Twitter. I, I Coop the Twitter detective over here trying to make something out of nothing. <laughs> but he, he was on here tweeting. I, I'll go back to it. I'll, I'll put it on stream right now so everyone else can see what I'm talking about if they weren't here. Uh, Sam Bruce tweeted out, where was it? I'm, I'm looking at it right now while I've got you on the phone. Uh, he tweeted out December 30th, 2018, I want to come back to the U. So uh, it, <laughs> he, he straight up put it out there. And then uh, and old Wayne Brady, come on. <laughs> yeah. And a AR tweeted today, I think. Yes. AR tweeted today, bring back Lambo Sambo 1 2. And we were talking about because he said 2. As in, they've already brought someone also, back. Also, yeah. bring back this guy. So that kind of brings the JT stuff. But then it just cracked me up so much. This is the kicker, because then Sam Bruce tweeted and said, "I promise to be good," and he put a bunch of little emojis and stuff on there. It cracked me up. So <laughs> it, it, it's very apparent that he he wants to come back if if they will entertain the idea. Uh, I would see why not. Yeah. Everyone deserves another chance. Yep, I'm, I'm down for it. Like I said, I really just think that I'd like to see uh, Sam Bruce and JT individually sit down with Manny and potentially the AD or whoever else needs to be in there. I, I, some person from the NCAA, whatever has to be done, and sit down one-on-one -on -one and just make sure they seem legit. Uh, they have the, uh, the, they're wanting to focus on the school and the football and stuff, and if so, give them a second chance. I totally agree. I, I'm and I saw Manny's. Uh, did you watch the video where they uh, introduced him as the head coach? I did. Yeah. Oh man, it gave me goosebumps just looking yeah. at Manny. Yeah, he violent football. That's what we're getting back to. It's, he said violent. Yeah. I said <laughs> check mark. This is it. Let's go. Let's get to work. Yeah. Violent football. <laughs> Let's go. He says we got to go back to the old you. Yeah. The way exactly. you used to remember remember it as. Yep. I yeah, no, down. I said it here. I said it here. I'm a man, buddy. I said it here. <laughs> yep. I'm, I'm ready. I'm, you, I'm sure you I don't know if you can tell or not, but I'm ready. I'm ready. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I am so far ready. But we'll right. see. We'll yep. see. Everything's in place, buddy. We'll see. We're, we're already doing a lot, little bit of this. We're doing a little bit of talking already, but that's what we do. Uh, so ho hopefully we'll be able to start backing some of it up a little bit finally. It's been a while. Well, yeah, because yeah, I'm ready to eat some gator tail. Yep, me too. I'm, I'm doing a video. When that gets closer, I'm going to try to find some gator meat around here. Uh, it's, it's harder to find here for some reason. So I'm going to do a video. We're going to see if we can find some. We're going to have some for dinner the night before. Hell yeah, throw it on the grill, baby. Yep, most definitely. We're going to do it, man. <laughs> I might have to come up for that show. <laughs> there you go. Yep, yep. But hey, I, I, you know, I, I appreciate you calling in, man. You know I value uh, your input. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's family. Got to always yep, most get back definitely. to family. <laughs> yeah, hey, have, have a good night, my man. Uh, you too, brother. All right, thanks. Bye-bye. Later, man. Peace. All right, let me address some of these new subs and donations real quick. I don't want you guys to think that those go unnoticed. I'm going to shut off the phone line for just a second. Um, 
There were a couple that came through. Randy Noel, welcome to the College Football Family. Thank you for that sub, my friend. We addressed the Noel Daddy. Thank you again for that $5 donation, man. Rod G coming through with the $2 says, all fans are welcome. Absolutely, Rod G. Uh, Huff Huff came through with the $20 donation. Thank you, Huff Huff. That's above and beyond, man. Thank you for that. Um, no message, just sends $20. Thank you, Huff Huff. Uh, Chris Mercer as well, $20 donation. You guys are tearing it up tonight. He says it's not a rebuild, it's a reboot. Bring in Jalen. He is all for Jalen uh, Hurts coming in. Uh, thank you for that $20 donation, my friend. And uh, Robert Suber, I think I'm pronouncing that correctly, coming through with a $2 donation. Thank you for that, man. Thank you for that. Okay. We are growing the college football family tonight, guys. We've got a lot of new subs. Um, I think we may only have time for one more call. Let me... Let me see real quick. Okay, I, I need an, an honest opinion from you guys. And give, and give me just a second, guys. Give me just a second on the phone line. I have an honest, I, I really, for real, Coop needs your honest opinion on this. I'm going to let it read out this donation from my man, Jay Wade, and then I, I need to ask you guys something. This is what it take to wear the you on the side of your helmet. 30s in Maryland today. High 70s in Miami tomorrow. Where would you go? <laughs> Jay Wade, my man, coming through with the $20. Thank you, my man. That's what we said, man. You're going to hop. Look, here. Okay, I I'm in my pajamas. Listen. Or not pajamas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pajamas. Listen. Listen. This is me. I'm Jalen Hurts. Listen. This is me, Jalen Hurts, getting off the plane in Maryland. Okay, here we go. This is I'm getting off the plane in Maryland. Here we go. To where okay, I'm Jalen Hurts. I'm, sorry I'm getting off the plane. Jalen is Woo! signing. It's a done deal. Right back on Mark the plane in Miami. I'm, I do. I know. I turn around. I'm getting right back on the plane. I say, take me to Miami. Take me to Miami. Get me the heck out of here. You couldn't get me out of Maryland fast enough. So, th thank you. Thank you, Jay Wade. Thank you, my man. You couldn't get me out of there quick enough, man. This is what it take. 30 degrees. You. No, I'm take sorry, me to Coral help. Gables, man. Coop, it's always when we can rep the hurricanes. And two more donations. Uh, I do, Jonathan. I'm going to take your phone call, Jonathan. I saw your message there, bro. Uh, Huff Huff coming through with another $2 donation says, Jalen is signing. It's a done deal. Mark my words. A bold statement, Huff Huff. We will see. Thank you for that $2 donation, my friend. Rod G also coming through with a $20 donation. It says, Coop, it's always when we can rep the hurricanes. You know it, my man. Thank you. Huge supporter of the channel. Thank you, Rod G. What's going on, Fusion Train? We're, we're having a blast over here tonight, man. Okay, so uh, my Miami Hurricanes family, hear me out for a second. I have a very serious question. I have a very serious question. Where's the Sam Bruce speculation coming from? All uh, right here uh let me find it let me find it uh basically just him saying he wants to come back to the u this is sam bruce right here he says i want to come back to the u ar come back and tweeted bring back lambo sambo uh one which is sam bruce uh that the players want him uh, the players want him to come back uh, they want to give him a second chance we'll see we'll see okay miami hurricanes fans real quick I said that I was going to do a live hangout for the Cowboys versus Rams game in five minutes. Todd Merritt, thank you for that dollar ninety nine, my friend. Thank you for that donation. Thank you, my man. We're trying, Christopher. We're we're trying to grow it, man. Thank you, Sports G. Uh, we're trying to grow the college football family. I want this to be an entertaining, fun environment for you guys. I want you guys to know that that's my goal for this channel, and I will do whatever I need to do to make that happen, whether it be improvements to equipment, whether it be uh, whatever I need to do, okay? I want this to be a fun, entertaining environment for you guys, and I want everybody to feel welcome who comes over here. I want everybody to also to be able to express their opinion and show their love for their team, whether it's the Canes or someone else, okay? That, that's the point of this channel. Okay, so I said I was going to do a live hangout for the Cowboys Rams game in five minutes. Do I do that or do we continue this stream? And you can let me know if, because some people don't care about NFL. Some do, some don't. 
Basically, it would be a live hangout. We're not watching the game itself. We would be hanging out, watching it together. And we could continue to chat about this a little bit as well, but it's primarily going to be with that. And I'll still take your call, Jonathan, either way. Don't worry, I'll still take your call either way. Uh, but I don't care to completely either skip the NFL game or we go over to that. Either one. The problem is, here's the problem. I would have to end this stream and start a new stream. And it's a very well-known fact, if you are a streamer, that when you do that, you lose 70% of the people who were watching. I'm Just a Vibe says, how about those Tigers, Coop? How you feeling, my man? How you feeling? But we, I, I do not stream the actual game. What I do is I provide a link for the game in case you can't watch it. And it's a good link. It's, it's 1080p HD. It's a, it's a good link. And then we talk about it. Uh, we, we, it's basically a live hangout. And then I give you guys links for it, whatever. Uh, so either one. I don't care to do either one. The thing is, is people are still wanting to give their input on the Jalen Hurts situation. That's why I'm not sure if we should switch over or if we just if we just continue this because you guys seem to really be excited about this. Uh, I'm trying to find where my chat went. There we go. Okay. Keep going. So much to talk about still. See, that's the thing. That's the thing. There's still so much to talk about with this. No game. Continue. So maybe we just continue. We could continue this stream for longer. I've got all night. I, I'll stream all night, darn it. This is what it take to wear the U on the side of your helmet. I'm an LSU fan. I think you will get Martell to um. Ooh, okay. CB Savage, thank you for that $4 donation, my friend. He says an L he's an LSU fan. He thinks we will get Martell. The real question, CB Savage, is do Miami fans want Martell? Because we've talked a lot about Jalen. Uh, we haven't touched on Martell a whole lot. There's not a whole lot about Martell out there. That's the thing. Now, he's primarily been backup, so there isn't a whole lot. We, we could maybe do the Cowboys game late. Thank you, Raji. Thank you for hanging out, Raji. But we, we could do the NFL game late. Man, I made this dope thumbnail and everything for it. Check, check out this thumbnail. Hold up. You guys, I, you guys can at least appreciate the thumbnail that I made for it, for the game. Hold up. I'm going to pull it up. This is what it take <laughs> to wear the U on the side of your helmet. Go away, LSU fan. I, I see this how you spelled take. that, though, MDC. To where you Thank you for that, man. Thank you for that donation. Helmet. We got some Canes over here. You know it, man. Canes fans everywhere, man. We are everywhere. Uh, I would say all around the country, but we're actually all around the world. Um, there are Canes fans that watch this stream in Africa, uh, in Italy. I mean, I'm talking everywhere. Check, check, check out this dope thumbnail that I made uh, for the NFL game because no one's going to see it now since we're just going to keep talking about this, which is fine. Uh, check out this thumbnail that I made for the NFL game. Look at that. I was like, look at Zeke. Tell me Zeke don't look bad A in that thumbnail. Whether you like the NFL or not, or whether you like Ezekiel Elliott, uh, NFL or Cowboys at all, tell me Zeke don't look like a freak in that. And I mean that in a good way. I had a dope thumbnail set up and everything for it. Uh... But there's just so much to talk about with with the Canes right now that it's hard. That game is tonight, Glenn. Cowboys and Rams uh, kicking off within a few minutes. Within a few minutes. At least put I can put the link to that if you guys want. If you guys want, I can give you a link if you are trying to find a link for. Uh, that game, uh, I have a link where you can stream it if you're having problems. Uh, it, not if you're having problems. If you don't have cable or satellite, I can give you guys uh, a link for the Cowboys game so you can watch it. So just let me know if you guys want and I'll give you that link. Uh, what do we think about other possible transfers? There was actually a site that had every player that was currently in the transfer portal. And uh, MDC, thank you for that $1.99 who said, go away LSU fan, but he spelled it. You know, 
I see what you did there. And Huff Huff, come Huff Huff, man, you killing it tonight. Thank you, bro. Thank you for that. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll give you guys the link for the Cowboys game just in case you want it. I'll put it down there. Yeah, absolutely. Who's going to the Super Bowl? Probably the Chiefs, man. Probably the Chiefs. Let's be real. Nobody's stopping Mahomes. That just ain't going to happen. All right. I will put the link for the Cowboys game down in the description. Uh, it will be under where it says links to stream the game. Uh, if you do not have cable or satellite and you're trying to watch that game, there is a link down in the description to do so. Uh, now, what you're going to want to do, uh, I'll show you guys real quick. I'm going to show you live right here on air. Uh, this is very. This can be some valuable information uh, if if you're new to using. Uh, stream links and stuff for games what you want to do is uh, it is going to give you an ad at first I'm going to show you real quick when you input that link right here this is where it's going to take you when you input that link what you want to do is click the X up here in the corner this this applies to phones also click this little X right here that ads gonna go away when you click this play button the first time it is going to generate an ad that's normal. Click this. As soon as it generates the ad, close out of it. Once you do that, click it again. You're watching the game. Boom, there it is. I'm not going to show a whole lot of it because I don't want to get copyright strike. But you saw it. You saw it. You saw it. So that link is good for the game. Uh, this is a link. I'll put it in the chat as well. Cowboys versus Rams. There you go. There is a link in the chat to watch that game. Uh, just follow those steps. Click the X, click the play button, close out of the ad, click the play button. You're watching the game in HD. What's going on, Mike Steves? Cowboys or Rams? Man, Glenn, I'm going to be real with you guys. I'm going I'm to catch some flack for this one, but listen. Cowboys all the way. But the Rams are probably going to win. Let's be real. Let's be real. Okay. So let's continue the Miami discussion. If, if we're going to continue to hang out, Let's continue the Miami discussion. Um, let's see. Mm, mm. Here we go. Nice. Actually, uh, Jonathan, uh, I'm not trying. I'm sorry for, for hanging up on your call, Eric. Not that I'm hanging up, but um, let me see if I can get Jonathan online. He's been waiting in line. Can we watch Daniel Parker's highlights? He's good. I'll see if we can check it out, uh, MDC. Uh, give me just a minute. I do want to take Jonathan Flagg's call. Uh, he is another regular on the channel and uh, big supporter on the channel. And he was wanting to call in if he's still here. And are you still here, Russell? I saw you stop in earlier, my friend. Uh, it says, I just heard from Oklahoma official that Jalen Hurts was at OU today and he split on OU and TCU. Uh, I have heard that. Jalen Hurts is also interested in TCU. I'll drop a link for the hat. Yes, Robert. What is going on, my man? Nothing much, brother. What's up? Oh, uh, you know, we're just crazy over here as normal. You know, us us Miami fans, we like to uh, debate some things. So uh, I, wanted oh, yeah. to get, I, I wanted to get your call in. I'm sorry it took so long, man. It's been a crazy Oh, no, tonight. you're good. You're good. Uh, but, uh, you're good. What uh, are, are you calling to weigh in? on this uh, QB situation? Oh yeah, you already know. All right, all right. I'm, I'm gonna do the same thing I did with Eric. I'm gonna sit back for a second. I'll let you have the floor and uh, let's see what you got to say and we'll see what chat thinks. Okay, all right. With Jalen Hurts, one thing people need to know about Jalen Hurts, he actually easily will be the most accurate quarterback we've had even he's even accurate, more accurate than Brad Kaya. So as far as stat wise, he pretty much dumps on anything we've had. You have to put us back in our heyday before his numbers actually fall flat on their face. Now and do, now, do you what, think that he's just more talented than those players? More talented, or better coached, mm, or, or I mean, you, coach. or it may be hard better to say. Coach. I know, but. 
Better coach. Okay. That's what that is. Better coach. But um and since he's been at Alabama, he's had a new offensive coordinator every year. So he That's has true. no problem adjusting to schemes. And he's one of the leaders, was one of the leaders on the Alabama team. So the biggest thing Miami quarterbacks need is maturity in that room. Having two, the two quarterbacks we have now have either been suspended once or twice since they've been in Miami. That's no good. That's true. Well, you, somebody can't, supposed to be you, you can't, you can't deny that. that. That is definitely true. He's going to bring maturity and, like one of the guys earlier said, a championship mindset into that locker room. Now, one thing I do want to clarify up with our new OC, he was not the OC at Alabama. Right, I know, and a lot he of people keep make, saying that. He didn't that. Yeah. help make the plays. He didn't help run the plays. Right. He, didn't, he didn't do nothing. All he had was the quarterback. Mm -hmm. But Nick Saban knew enough of his credentials and how what he was able to do with Alabama quarterbacks because the knock on Alabama has always been they've never had a top tier quarterback. Right. They've they had, always they, had a game manager, and they just killed you running the football and playing defense. Yeah, that, so they, would, they would kind of just Alabama beat you got down. A remote decent quarterback, and the quarterback coach, ROC now, put Tua in the record books. No quarterback has ever been more efficient than Tua in college football history. That's under his watch. Everywhere he's been, the quarterback efficiency has been through the roof. They throw up stupid numbers. Yeah, and I do know, I saw the where they were doing an interview with Saban, and um, he praised the heck out of Enos uh, for his he ability to develop quarterbacks. He was to be Alabama's OC this coming season, which, yeah. like I said, it speaks volumes for Miami that he was finna be the OC for Alabama, but he would rather be at Miami. And I read, have, have you seen any of that information about him potentially having offers from Georgia? I can't seem to verify that anywhere. Uh, I haven't heard nothing about that, but I know a lot of people were after him. Yep. Because he, everywhere he's been, his quarterbacks throw up stupid numbers. And they're very efficient in what they do. It, it's, but, a, it's a nice breath of uh, fresh air compared to what we've been dealing with. Exactly. <laughs> and, he, and he's considered one of the greatest offensive minds in college football. Enough said. Because the way I look at it, if Nick Saban comes and tries to get you, you're good. <laughs> so, so I take it you, you do you consider Enos the the home run hire? I know there's could potentially always be someone better, but I, I mean, say, it, I would say he's the home run hire because look at it this way: Alabama started our offense, uh, our D line coach last year. All right, we stole their OC. How many times has somebody been able to take something? from Alabama True. because essentially, essentially he was basically offense coordinator for Alabama or offensive coordinator at, at Miami. He chose Miami. Yeah. People are going to look at that and be like, Hey, why did you choose Miami over Alabama? That's going to help with recruiting. This Not to mention he's one of the top recruiters in the country. It does kind of make possibly some kids maybe, you know, think twice a little bit. It's the reason uh, why he wanted to go there. Yep. Hey, if you don't mind, real quick, I just want to say hey to someone in the chat just real quick. Uh, I, I don't mean That's to interrupt true. you. I just wanted to say hey to, to Russell. Because uh, I, I don't think you were here earlier, Russell. I was letting everyone know that, you know, I found out that you only live about 20, 30 minutes from me and how we went and had lunch on Friday. Uh, so I just wanted to say hey to you, my man, and I uh, hope you had a good rest of your day at work, man. Uh, but, yeah, sorry to interrupt you, man. I just wanted to address because uh, oh, I think you had to bro. duck out earlier in the chat. So, so Jay, with Jalen Hurts, the, the one – and I, I've been asking everybody this that I know, but so him being here for just the one year doesn't bother you, right? No, because this this is if anybody was paying attention to Manny Diaz, his biggest issue is 
competition. He he says when the guys come back, he wants them to walk into a new situation. Whatever you did in the past, Perry, Weldon, JT, possibly Sam Bruce, don't matter. Slate clean. But competition breeds greatness. And he said he wants to get back to how we used to be. And if you look at our past, some of our best running backs, quarterbacks, it don't matter, they set the bench behind somebody. But yeah. when they finally got their shot, they dominated because they didn't want to lose it to nobody. I do feel like, and correct me if I'm wrong, and chat, you guys correct me if I'm wrong as well. I'm I'm starting to feel like, and I I I hate to say this, I'm I'm kind of debating on if I should say it now. I feel like that a lot of kids nowadays come in expecting to play just because they chose your school, almost like they're entitled to it. They say, "Hey, I I chose your school. I I came to the U. I came to this school, so." I'm supposed to start. If you don't start me, I'm out, or I'm going to go complain about you on social media. Uh, I'll speak so, on that. And I'll yeah. speak on that. Certain schools have that that type of mentality, Coop. But if the way I, the best, I'm sorry to say it, but the best okay. school that has done it so far is Alabama. It don't matter if you're the number one, like Najee Harris, number one recruit. He's been sitting the bench. Yep. You, and I, you don't come here. You don't. We're not going to give you nothing. It's all about what you earn. Yep. And that's many exactly. Creating that same culture. No, you get what you put in. We we don't care what rank you are. You got to have the mindset to come in and like I'm finna take it. So if you run away from competition, he doesn't care because you're not somebody he wants in the trenches anyway. Yeah. Because and- you're not going to be accountable. See, and that's that's kind of where I don't know exactly. Obviously, it's all just speculation and people guessing right now. That's why I don't know what's really going to happen with the Jalen Hurts situation. Because hypothetical, let, let, we'll play hypothetical again. I, I've played this game so many times tonight. But hypothetically speaking, let's assume Jalen Hurts loves Miami. He comes down to Miami tomorrow or Monday whenever he's supposed to visit. He says, wow, this is, this is where I want to be. They sit down. Manny Diaz says, well... You're not guaranteed to play because it's open competition. Does that stop him from coming to the U, But knowing that there's a chance he could sit on the bench the entire season? I don't think so because think look so? at what he did. Look at what he just did at Alabama. He doesn't shy away from competition. He, he's been trained not to do that. So he's not going to run away from competition. And as if he paid even remotely attention to our quarterbacks, I'm, I'm, I feel like Manny Diaz, like, and I remember Alonzo said this, Manny's taking on that Nick Saban, Belichick mindset. If you're not producing, you're not from the state. Which I'm a fan so, of. I'm a big fan Perry of. Perry and them are not going to have that leeway to be like Malik Rozier. <laughs> they will get ganked real quick. So, I, me, if I'm Manny Diaz, I want Jalen to come because – Perry and Weldon and Williams, they should be like, oh, we're not going to let this dude come here and take our stuff. Which there's nothing wrong with that. That's my thing. Exactly. There is nothing wrong because with – you, you can be – somebody pumping at the bits to take your spot. Yep. So you're going to put the work in every week. Yep. I so remember back playing – when I played in high school, This because this is the best real-life example I have since I you know lived through it. I remember playing in high school and just getting in absolute dog fights in practice. I'm talking, you know, getting somebody, let's say there ends up being a dog pile and people, you know, kind of throwing punches at each other and going at it back and forth. And it was just the competition. You were competing to earn your position. Literally after the game, we were all hanging out at McDonald's, you know, just chilling, hanging out. So it, it it's it's just part of it. You that That's what you do. And that, like I said, I'm, I'm all for I hope Manny Diaz means it. Whenever he says it, it's open competition and everybody competes and you have to earn your spot. I just hope so mad that he actually means that and does it. Yes. Now, the biggest thing with me, and I saw one of the guys in the links talk about it, the guy that I would love to see come is Plum Lee. 
Yeah, a lot of people, I'm not going to lie, like I said, I, I, I try to not act like I know more than I do or anything like that. I have not seen okay. anything on this guy, so I'm not familiar with him. I got you. I sent you, I sent you a thing on him, but if you didn't get it, I'll send oh, it to you wait. again. Yeah, I, but, you sent me a text, right? Uh, Yeah. Okay, I think I, I got it. Thing. I just haven't looked at oh, it yet. A, a quick little thing on him. He was the 2019, at the time, only recruit for Georgia. So he was coming. He was committed to Georgia. He was planning on coming to Georgia because Justin Fields was leaving, going to Ohio State. Okay. So he was excited. He's like, "Okay, I'm just, I'm just going against Fromm." Georgia managed to flip Ohio State's four-star quarterback to come to them. So now Plum Lee was like, "Nah, <laughs> uh, I'm a." Uh. So then now it's like. He's waiting. He wants to see who Miami's OC was going to be on whether he's going to commit to us now. So okay. we got our OC now, so we'll see. But the dude runs a legit 4-3-9. Now, he's where, labeled as an athlete, but he can swing the ball around. Now, where, where is he right now? Is, is he a senior in high school? Yeah, he's in uh, high school. He's okay. part of this 2019 class. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. I was just wondering how soon he would be coming if he did, because like I said, I, I wasn't sure. Hey, I just know his name. That's yeah, it. and uh, he's going to – wherever he goes, he's going to be an early enrollee. Okay, so, so that would be a good thing. Yeah. yeah. But – um, so that would be one guy too. But um, I'll say this. Well, JT – well, Jalen Hurts is supposed to be going – well, he should be at Oklahoma now. And he's supposed to go to Miami tomorrow. So yeah, that's what I keep hearing. If tomorrow. he cancels, if he cancels that visit to Miami tomorrow, then you already know where he's going. <laughs> but yeah, if he goes true. to yeah. Miami, then obviously Oklahoma didn't do a good enough job on selling him. Right. So it's... it all depends what he wants, what he wants to do. Because honestly, if he goes to Oklahoma, ain't much competition over there. It's just Texas. Yeah. And then so he would throw if. If he just wanted to just throw up some stupid numbers, not much competition over there. So uh, it all yeah. depends on what he what he's trying to yep. do. I know, and that's the thing people got to realize. It, it may be we we don't know. We're not in Jalen Hurts' heads. We're not, you know, at least most so of us aren't. It all depends on what it. exactly he's yeah, trying to get he, out of the situation. Is he, is he just looking to buff up if his he, stats yeah. for the NFL to, to yeah. prepare? Or does for he want his quarterback he coach because he's and prove he's been the most efficient under our new OC, so he's trying to follow him. Yep. I mean, there's, there's, so, there's so, so many that, scenarios. Is that what he's trying to do? Yeah, there's so many scenarios. But JT, or well, Jalen Hurts, it'll be instant success with him. And even without him, it's going to be instant success. I actually expect the defense to improve, too. I can see that. They're yeah. going to get better, too. They're going to get better. So you want the biggest thing, biggest reason why I say the defense will actually play better because this year coming, well, this year, they're going to actually have an offense that they know, oh, guys, we're going to have to hold them to like eight points, six points, because we know the offense ain't going to do nothing. They're not going to have that stress of that. They're going to be able – no hold, let it hang loose, run with my hair on fire, because I know regardless of what happens, if we make a mistake, we know our offense is going to score. We ain't got to worry about that. Yeah. yeah. That's why the defense is going to be better. And just like coming into this past season, everybody thought the defense was going to take a step back, and we they actually did. took a step forward. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So – it's only going to get better, and not to mention we got Brevin Jordan's friend to transfer. Yeah, the uh, his, the safety uh, classmate from high school. Yeah, the safety. Yeah, Bolden, B Bubba Bolden, I think from USC. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think he's going to be. So, I think he's a pretty good football player. Yeah, but we're going to be fine, and I feel our recruiting class. We're about to we we about to steal some people. No, look, I'm, I'm I'll pull up my. I'll pull up my tweet right here on stream. I said it. People got mad at me for saying it. Where is it? Let me find it. Mm, here we go. 
I'm going to put it on the screen right now. This was my tweet yesterday. Miami is the hottest team in college football right now. Try to tell me I'm wrong. Everybody's talking about Miami right now. Everybody. Oh, yeah. And what's so good, the disadvantage that Florida has, and I'm sure Florida State's very happy they ain't got players for him in season no more, they don't know what kind of offense we're running. It's true. <laughs> it's true. It's going to be a surprise. <laughs> Yep, I love it. Like I said, a lot of people are going to say, and I think you'll agree with me on this, uh, and if you don't, it's okay, too. You don't have to agree, but I think a lot of people will agree when I say that I, I'm I'm super pumped, and I'm going to talk a, a lot of trash, of course. I'm going to do that regardless, but I do think oh, yeah. you know, we have a lot of work to do. It, it's possible that it takes a, a little bit of time to really get exactly where we want to be. I'm just so excited because changes are actually happening. The reason why I'm extra excited yeah. is because – be realistic for a second. We all thought that we were still going to be sitting here in January begging and pleading with Mark Rick to please hire an OC because we suck so bad. Like that's where we thought yep. that's what we thought we were going to be streaming about in January. And instead, we're talking about all these flips we're getting, all these recruits talking about Miami, all these transfers, we're talking about our big OC hire, uh, all of our the players, changes the on players everything. Love so th the that's OC. Yeah, that's why I'm even more vocal and excited about cuz a lot of people have been messaging me. You, you guys don't see a lot of the messages I get off air. Like I'm talking I'll I'll wake up in the morning and I love it. I'm just saying. I'll wake up in the morning and I'll have 25, 30 instant messages on Twitter, 50 messages on Instagram. People, you know, telling me you're just so hype on Miami and you think you guys are so good and this and that. I'm I'm gonna talk some, some trash and some stuff, but it, it, I'm really just so excited because I didn't think this is where we were going to be right now. I didn't think this is the exactly. kind of stuff we were gonna be talking about. Exactly. And look at our schedule. We got two games that we really need to show up for. Then there's no reason why we shouldn't run the table. It it would still be again. I know we said that this year, but obviously there were some weird. Scenarios. Well, I but, said but, no. Uh, we we put some uh, asterisks next to that. Yeah. If Mark Rick let them loose yeah. on the offense, yeah. we'll be no. fine. But <laughs> overall. Most people will agree that the schedule, even though we don't know exactly what our offense is going to look like and all this stuff, blah, 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 whatnot, we, we, our schedule would still be a favorable schedule, I think. Now, it's very oh, early, yeah. I we, know. We I'm definitely got a favorable schedule. Yeah. And let's say, let's say for the sake of argument, let's say we come out and our offense puts on a clinic against Florida. You know how many recruits we're going to win that first weekend? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm switching over and showing the schedule on the screen right now. Uh, Florida. We got a pretty pretty favorable schedule. Central this year. Michigan Chippewas, whoever the heck that is. Um, That's where our OC <laughs> used to be the. Oh, yeah, Central Michigan. Head coach yeah, at. duh. Just kidding. Mm -hmm. Just, uh, that was a joke. Was when they sure, were good. I was making sure. When they were, were good. I was making sure you weren't sleeping on me, man. Making sure you paying attention. Uh, <laughs> we got uh, FIU, Duke, Florida State at Florida State, but you know, we'll see what's happening with that with the FSU. That done turned uh, into Miami, Miami, Miami State in <laughs> Tallahassee. We got Georgia Tech. Uh, I don't know what's going to be going on with Georgia Tech with the new head coach. It's, I don't know if the triple option is a be, thing. Are, are they still running the triple option? I, I don't know. I, I honestly have no idea. But see, see, this is the thing. If they're not running the triple option, if anybody realized, like, Paul Johnson's scheme, those offensive linemen are undersized. That's why they, that's why they chop block. Yeah, they kind of have to run that with their, their set. Yeah, they have to. Because they're undersized, none of none of their offensive linemen are at are even at three hundred pounds. Right, they're two seventy five and lower. So if they turn into a pro style or something like that, it's going to be some growing pains if they can't get no bigger linemen yeah. in there. Yeah, so it's very possible that that could be uh, hopefully a game that we can take care of. Because sometimes it seems so fifty fifty before. If the but triple I like the I like the around. revenge the revenge factor. I do. Yeah, me too. Because everybody, because even when we win, everybody's gonna be waiting for. Okay, where's that game? Miami's gonna drop it and then start <laughs> this four 
this four game losing streak. Uh, yep, yep. Yeah, slim, so the slim, players are going to be thinking about that. They're not going to let up. Yeah, slim that's Shady, why. Slim Shady Kane yeah. says no. They're not running the triple option. So maybe maybe okay. he saw something about them because I, I think somebody mentioned that they weren't going to utilize the triple option any longer. So I well, think that's true. I mean, Paul Johnson statistically has been the best one at the triple option. So you don't let him go unless you're yeah. planning on going a different route. Very true. <laughs> yeah, and then it so, looks like after that, uh, Louisville. Um, Virginia, they then Virginia Tech, built. North Virginia Carolina. Virginia has a great quarterback. They low-key okay. have a good quarterback. Virginia has a low-key good quarterback. Still overall uh, a pretty fa- – it really right, – I'm circling this, this, this Florida Gators game right here, that first game. We have oh, yeah, to come out there. and make a statement game one. Like, it, it's what, crucial. Here's what's more funny about that game, at least for me. My mom's a Gator. Uh-oh. My sister's a Gator. Uh-oh. My dad kind of bounces around between Miami and the Gators. Oh, no. But me and my brothers and my newly converted girlfriend, she's a hurricane. There you go. Her son was a hurricane. She was a Seminole. Done converted her. Now she's a hurricane. There you go. So this this is gonna be this is gonna be fun, and I, I plan on being down there. I, I've done some converting myself. It, it takes a little bit of work, but uh, oh if yeah, you, if you stick with it, you can convert them. Oh yeah, it was an easy <laughs> it was an easy sell. <laughs> but man, you, it was you, an easy sell. You, you know that I appreciate your input, man, and I, I like I said, I, I hope you've been doing okay, man. And uh, oh yeah, I've been great, man. She's been she's been keeping me upbeat, man. <laughs> there you go. But uh, I, I think we'll, we'll hop off here. And I know there were still two or three other people that, that wanted to uh, call in real quick. I think I've been live for, this might be the longest stream in a while. Yeah, it's, it's been two hours and 40 minutes so far. Probably, yeah, uh, but it's probably just, easily. Like I said, it, it's exciting times. I, I really think right now I, I, I can stream seven days a week and everybody's going to show up because everybody wants to talk about Miami, which is exciting. I'm, I'm, I'm super pumped about it. Uh, so... We'll, yep. we'll hop off here and take a few other calls. And uh, like I said, man, I, I value your input. And thanks for taking time to call in tonight, man. Oh, yeah, for sure. I always love it, bro. Yep. Have a good one, man. All right, man. All right, thanks. Bye-bye. Yep. I'm going to turn off the phone line for just a second. Don't hate me. Don't hate me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Is Russell still in the chat? I actually wanted to give you a chance to call in real quick, Russell. Uh, if you wanted to. You may not want to, and that's okay. I was going to give you the opportunity if you wanted to. Let's do a Russell check. Is Ru- Russell uh, is actually uh, a Hurricanes fan who I found out uh, lives not too far from me. And um, we actually went and had lunch on Friday. A super nice guy. Super nice guy. Uh, like I said, it's all family around here. And uh, that's literally never met the guy before in person. He messaged me, says, hey, maybe we should have lunch one day. I said, where at? Uh, he said, I go on lunch at 12. We went went out, met, had lunch. And uh, super nice guy, super nice guy. This might be him calling in now. Let's see. All right, looks like I recognize this area code. Uh, who do we have on the line? What up, Coop? What's going on? Who who do we have on here? I want to make sure I've got who I think I have. It's Russell, brother. Right, what's going on, Russell? I, I didn't want to say it was you and it not be you. So uh, <laughs> I hear you, man. <laughs> how's it going, man? Going good, man. I just wanted to, I've got some guests over, but I want to highlight you real quick. Okay, man, yeah. I always watch your shows. Um, but for real about the helmet, I thought about it. I don't know if you saw the last thing I said, but my son pretty much took over my man cave. He turned it into his own video game cave. Oh, no, so. no, Russell. Ah, I let him do <laughs> You're it. You're okay with it? You're okay with it? Yeah, I'm good with it. I love him. It's my boy. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, like I said, man, it's a nice helmet, and I don't get to donate money often, but I think you get a new backdrop, man. I'd be more than happy to let you have that helmet to display to you right there behind you on that helmet, bro. Hey, we'll we'll talk about it. I I I always feel bad taking. I I feel bad honestly when people donate to me because I'm like, oh, you don't have to do that. Like you worked hard for that money. That's something I I think that you should hang on to it. But we we will talk about it. 
basically, guys, R- Russell is saying that he, he he has a Miami Hurricanes helmet, and he was talking about giving it to uh, me to put on display back behind us. Uh, we'll talk about it off stream a little bit, my man, but that def- you definitely do not have to do that. Um, but it, you know that I appreciate it, though, man. Yeah, sir. Now, did you let everybody know that you bought me lunch and hooked me up with a free uh, shirt? No, I didn't. Tell, I didn't tell them who paid for the date, man. I, I didn't. I didn't disclose that information. This how our boy Coop rolls. He's a good dude, man. He's a good dude. Yeah, hey, R- Russell pulled up in his lifted truck. He had a Miami uh, beanie on. He has a Miami uh, case on his phone. He's he's decked out in U gear, guys. Yeah, hey, I, I appreciate you taking time to call in. Yeah, I, I'll message you uh, off air, my man, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit. All right, appreciate it, brother, and uh, go Canes, and love you, Canes family. Y'all have a good evening. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, have a good rest of your weekend, Russell. You too, brother. All right, thanks, bro. Bye-bye. All right, we'll go ahead and take another call. Let me guys, let me know, guys, if if you want to end the stream at any point. It's been almost three hours. This is the longest stream. In history of this channel. What's going on, Tyler? All right, looks like we got 954. Uh, who do we have on the line? Yo, what's up? It's Mike. What's up, Mike? Is this Mike Steves? Yes, sir. What's going on? I, I, I'm i getting a little better with names, man. I'm starting to learn them a little bit. But uh, are, are you calling in to talk about the QB situation, or what are you wanting to discuss, man? Are you still there? I can't hear you. Hello? There you are. I can hear you now, man. My phone's messed up. I can only talk on speaker. I don't know what the hell the problem is. Ah, yes. No, but I wanted to talk about um the Jalen Hurts situation. Okay, okay. Um, hey, what's going on, man, Jones? Yeah, talk away, man. You, you've got the floor. Well, one, the kid's a monster. Yeah, he, he but the buddy that was, guy that was talking about it two calls ago, everything he's stating is 100% true. If we get him, there's no – I honestly think, yeah, he's going to compete for the position, but there's no doubt he ain't starting. Like, I keep, like I've, I was on – I'm always on Slappin's uh, live stream with him talking about um, – mm-hmm. talking with Slap on there. Yeah, Slappin's and, a good guy. Yeah, I love him. Look, you two are the only only channels I watch. I watch all the other ones, and I'm not too fond of them. Oh, but anyway. No big, no big. Everybody has different opinions and things like that. Most yeah, of course, yeah. of course. But anyways, no um, – Thing is, Jalen Hurts is going to start if he comes here. Everyone knows it. And I saw something in the chat how they they said it's like 32 degrees in Oklahoma right now. And South Florida sounds so good right now. And he's 100% right. I think Jalen Hurts is going to land tomorrow and he's going to be like, you know what? Screw the cold. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, let's see. Let's see. Uh, let, me, let me look up the weather here. I'm, I'm going to pull it up. We're going to see what we're looking at for tomorrow. Uh, let's see. Looks like when Jalen arrives in Miami, uh, it's going to be somewhere around 75 to 80 degrees. Amazing. That's perfect weather. Yes. Bro. Perfect. Now, I don't know how he's going to feel when it's 90 degrees outside and you're literally dripping sweat inside wa- just walking out your house. I don't know how he's going to feel about that because I live in South Florida. I live I'm, literally. Uh, I'm, I'm, like, looking at, live, I'm looking at Maryland right now, Florida. 30 degrees and snowing. No, thank you. Yeah. I live in Pompano Beach, Florida. It's literally okay, okay. clear skies right now. So I'm like I'm like a 20 minute drive from uh, Hard Rock Stadium. Okay, nice. You know, so I honestly feel if Jalen comes in, he's gonna start. I don't, and but the only issue is, is I think he might commit to Oklahoma because one, Murray is going to the draft this year. He's looking at an automatic start, and look at his receiving core. The three out of the, if I'm not mistaken, three out of the four. Start the receivers that he has are staying, and they just got the number one wide receiver in Hazelwood. Yeah, that's that's a pretty pretty sight to be walking in on. That's yeah. I mean, you, that that's hard to deny. Most de- especially if he's looking to buff up his stats for the NFL. If if that's what that's his future what I think plan is, just trying to do. You know what I mean? It, and I was re- I was looking up on something earlier. I was seeing that if Jalen Hurts were to go to the draft this year, he'd be probably a hot, low second, high third. I could see that. And I could see that. Due to the fact of just being in Alabama. And he does have a history with, uh, what's it called, as a freshman. Now, I was looking up uh, stats with Slappin the other day with uh, against Trevor Lawrence and freshman year. And 
Jalen Hurts' freshman year. One, Jalen Hurts only threw, I'd say, five, maybe 600 yards less than Trevor. Hmm. He threw, I think, six more interceptions and only six less touchdowns, if I'm not mistaken. No, no, don't quote me on We, we won't hold you to exact specifics there, but, yeah, I got you. Yeah, so if you sit back and look, as a – because Trevor Lawrence, he doesn't run. Uh, Trevor Lawrence, no. I think, only had like 170 rushing yards all season. And Hearns had over 900 rushing yards. As a running quarterback, to keep them stats and keep a percentage, just as keep the percentage three – Three points lower than Trevor Hurts. I mean, Trevor Lawrence shows you how good of a freaking quarterback he is. Yeah, no, man. I think I had a, I had stats somewhere. Uh, let me see if I can find them while I've got you on the phone here. I, I was looking on ESPN. Shoot, where was it? That was what I was looking at. I yeah, looked up I, uh, freshman stats. Doesn't Hurts have total in his career at Alabama? Isn't it like? 1,500 or 2,000 rushing yards? Maybe I'm wrong. This That Something. sounds wrong. I, but. I wasn't looking at rushing. I, I mean, the total, I was just looking as a freshman. You know what I mean? Because I compared Jalen Hurts to uh, Trevor Lawrence because everyone was saying, oh, well, he, he doesn't really have that great of an arm. But everyone's saying how Trevor Lawrence is the best quarterback in the league right now. Yeah, so if uh, we're comparing, everyone is making that argument, yeah. If we're comparing right now, when Jalen Hurts was a freshman, he threw for 62% completion rating. Trevor Lawrence's completion rating was a 65.3 or something like that. Mm -hmm. That's only three points back. That's pretty damn good for a quarterback that supposedly ain't as good as Trevor Lawrence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is true. You know what I mean? Um, but if we sit back, say we don't get hurt. Or say we don't get him. Tate Martell, yes, I'm not too fond of him. I yeah. think that he's just he's flashy for no reason i think that he's not going to be someone that we want but I, i'm just not seeing enough from fit. tate martell personally i'm not saying that he's not a baller that he's not good or that no I i'm not want saying him. that either I, i'm I just not seeing enough i like yet. the kid i like the kid but i don't think he's miami you get what i'm saying right. you can look at a player and be like oh he's miami <laughs> right you know yeah. what i mean you look at tate and he's like you're like oh he ain't Miami. Get out of here, kid. Yeah, and you're I'm not, actually looking you're not at Miami. yeah total career rushing yards for Hurts. Now again, that's with the system in place at Alabama uh, at that at the three years he was there. But total, uh, including 2018, even though I know he didn't play as much, but almost 2,000 rushing yards for him for um, a quarterback. Yeah, uh, 1,976. So, perfect example. There's running backs at big name colleges that don't even get 2,000 in a career. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like you he, know was, he was he was going to average around 1,000 yards per season rushing if he would have got to continue yeah. to play in 2018. That's, yeah. that's a running back, bro. You you literally have a running back that can literally throw the ball. Yeah, throw he, the ball. He's about – it looks like he's 6'2", 220 roughly uh, for his size. Now, that Plumley kid that's committed – from what they're saying, he's hard commit to Georgia. But like they said, they're waiting on – I think what he's been doing is he's waiting on to see what Jalen Hurts is doing. <laughs> yeah, everybody's waiting on the everybody's next guy to see waiting what on Hurts. Yeah, and I'm telling you, I don't know why, bro, but something is big about to happen. Even, I don't know what it is, don't know how it's going to happen, but something big is happening in Miami right yeah. now. Yeah, there's actually I, he, you. He, you already know Manny Diaz is on the phone behind closed doors whispering to other players, being like, look, blah, 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 yeah. keeping it on the DL. Because there, you know, there, there's heard a, a lot. There's a ton of stuff we don't know. To, how many people did you see, just be honest with me, how many people did you see mention Dan Enos's name when it came to offensive coordinator? None. Exactly. Me and Slappin went over the freaking offensive uh, What's coaches. What's going on, Tony? The OC coaching list um, a couple weeks, like two, three weeks earlier. Two, two, three weeks ago, we went live and we were talking about it. And we didn't bring him up at all, but we did state. I, I stated, dude, I was like, look, if we're going to hire after the championship game, there's a high chance it's going to be uh, someone from Alabama or yeah, Clemson. Because why, why else would he wait? Why, why, why would you why wait would for you them wait? to play? Because exactly. everybody's chomping at the bit saying, Manny, say something now. Re recruits are waiting. Say something now. There's a reason why yeah, he waited. You know, hey, I'll tell you right now, Manny's having a blast right now. Oh, he yeah, is yeah. rolling 
all of us. He's trolling every Kane's family, and, the whole Kane's family out and there. And you know what? Before I'm perfectly they okay announced, with it. Before they announced Dan Enos as the OC, Manny puts up a freaking Twitter. I'm pretty sure all y'all saw it. A Twitter pay, a Twitter, a post with a uh, pug hit, slamming a home run and him stating home run. And I'm like, yep. really, bro? Yeah, we talked who about it. He? I actually, I pulled it up. I'll pull it up again for anybody who didn't see it because not I, I forget Wild that not everyone has Twitter and ball. stuff. Yeah, I remember I, I was sitting in par, in the parking lot. Uh, I just went to the chiropractor because uh, I'm getting old. I gotta get these bones popped and cracked a little bit. You know? <laughs> and I'm sitting in the parking lot. And I, I see new new tweet from Manny Diaz. I'm like, what, what's this dude hitting a hump? What, wait a second. Whenever I saw it, and he was it, he was just eating it up. You know he was. You know he was grin- He was sitting at his desk grinning from ear to ear when he sent that tweet out. Now, I, another thing I feel like is a good thing for Jalen Hurts if he comes to Miami is he's not he's going into a system because I'll tell you right now. Yeah, our OC now was not the OC at Alabama, but he did help with those plays he knows those plays like the back of his hand yeah yeah and his playbook he's i'm pretty sure he had a couple plays in there too so he could, everybody, he could have had a running, hand in it yeah he could have he definitely had a hand in it so you really jalen hurts going into that system coming to miami into this system it's uh um, already a step forward Already a step forward in the competition because he's already ahead of Williams. He's already ahead of Perry because he knows most of the plays that the ROC wants to run. Yeah, you know what I mean? So yeah, if yeah. he like like our first guy stated, if he wants to do a comp, if he's not if he's not shy of a competition, and he comes to Miami, you got to think though he's gonna he already has the head head start. Because well, here's my thing. I, this is. Uh, kind of a way, something that I can say that without necessarily being one way or the other, which I've kind of made my opinion known on how I feel about it. Even if we don't get Jalen Hurts, there's still a lot of exciting things that that can happen for us coming up, even in the QB situation. So, because I know a lot of people right now are so hyped on Jalen. And like I said, people are arguing both sides of it and I get both sides. I just I don't want Canes fans to just be like, oh great, like we didn't get Jalen. What the heck, man? There's still some exciting now, things that can happen. Even I do want to say something it. about this. So say we don't get another quarterback, which is possible. I it's feel, possible. I feel we. I honestly, I'm not a Perry fan at all. I don't like him. I don't think he's our guy. I'm not. I don't feel like he is at that caliber of quarterback to be our guy. To, he's not uh, he, like I said earlier. You look at him. I look at him, and I look at him. He's not my end. Now, now, you know, do you that's, think that's my opinion? So, do you think I, that if that's we're a, gonna play anybody from what we have? We haven't even gave Jerem Williams a chance. We had four games because we redshirted him this year. We had four games to give this guy a chance. Or you just you know what? We're down. We're losing already. Get in there. Let's see what the hell you can do. What do so, we have to lose? So We're already you, getting blown out. Do you think that with Perry – now, I'm just asking your opinion. I'm not trying to put you on the spot. It, I just no, like I said, I, I, like, spot, I, I like everyone's – seeing everyone's opinion. And I like seeing the chance reaction because, again, not everyone's going to agree with everyone. And that, that's, that's, that's fine because we all just we, – we have our own opinion on what we think is best for the team. And that, that's just how it is. We're, that's how it will always be. Do, do you think that with Perry – it, do you think that he's not talented enough? Do you think that he's not been coached properly? What What is it about Perry that you... I don't think... I've said this multiple times, and I'll go over it again, but I don't think he has the football IQ. I don't think that he's smart enough to play the game. He's out, He's athletic. He's talented. The kid's good. But it's just talent. And I'm sorry, hard work and Football smarts beats talent every time. And I, I'm just looking at chat. I'm looking at, I didn't want you to think I was, it wasn't responding. I was looking at chat to see what they think because uh, I like seeing their response. And, uh, no, no, no that's it. fine. That's fine. No, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to explain Go why I say that. Because okay. as a redshirt freshman, first off, you sat for a year, one. If you knew that playbook, they would have opened up the playbook. They'd be like, all right, he already knows the playbook. Let's get him in there. Let's get him throwing the ball. Let's see what the hell he can actually do. 90% of the time in 
when he used, when he got in, they were running deep and dunk passes, which shows me. And I don't know. As a coach, I, I sit back and I look. I'm like, and when I'm coaching the offense or I'm coaching the defense, if I put someone in that doesn't know doesn't know what they're doing, I call plays that I know that they know, or short routes and easy passes and stuff like that. That's all they were doing with him. So to me, it's like, okay, obviously he doesn't know the playbook. As a redshirt freshman, that is extremely unacceptable, one, due to the fact that you sat all year last year. You should have known that playbook by the back of your hand by week six, seven of your redshirt season. <gasps> Excuse me. You know what I mean? And that's, that, that's why I, I, I'm not too fond of him because when he goes out there, sometimes he just looks lost, bro. He looks so lost. Like, he's like, he doesn't know who to throw to. He, he follows the receiver the whole way, just like Malik Rozier. I think he's a taller, slower Malik Rozier. Yeah, and, and like I said, because there are people that are going to agree with you and disagree with you in the chat. I know because so, – and I, I know that, that – that you know this, you know, be hanging out in the streams and stuff. There are people that are saying, you know, hang up on this caller, hang up. Everyone is free to express their opinion here. Uh, Go ahead. Just, no, 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 no. Look, <laughs> I, I, I just want to let you know hard. that some people will agree, some people won't, and I know that they, you're they okay can with disagree. That. No, I'm not mad about that. Ain't no worries, bro. Trust me, you're good. I'm a diehard cane cane boy. I was raised up watching the Canes ever since I was born. You know what I mean? I, I was, I probably came out holding the hurricane helmet. <laughs> I don't know. But, no, bro, the thing is, I know everyone has their own opinion. That's my opinion. And just, you shouldn't, like, and this is to chat. If you hang, if you were to hang up on me, I respect that, you know what I mean? But you respect <laughs> everyone's you. opinion, and that's yeah. why I watch this channel. I got because you. you respect everyone, you let everyone get what they got to say out, and if you agree, you agree. If you don't, you don't, you know what yep. I mean? It's exactly. a civil conversation. Yep, like I said, at the end of the day, I'll ask you this question, and I, I know what your answer is to it already. Honestly, I could answer it for you and know 100% this is what you're going to say. Either way, you just want the Canes to get back on track and win football games, right? Yes. Exactly. Yeah, that, that's all everybody wants is just to get back to winning again because, honestly, we're sick and tired of losing. You're right, 100%. Like, but I don't know. I just feel that's, – that's the way I feel. I don't feel Perry's our guy. And if we're going to give anybody a shot, give Williams a shot. We'll see. It, it's going to be, you know, it, it's going to be a crazy, it's going to be a crazy year. I, I'm really looking forward to it, man. I really am. All right, man. Well, I, it was great talking to you, bro. I hope everything goes well and you have a great night. All right. Absolutely. Hey, I, I appreciate you taking time out of your night to call in and hanging out. Cause this is, we've been live. How long we've we been live now? Three hours. This is the longest stream yeah. I've ever had on the channel other than football games, of course. So I appreciate yeah. you hanging out, and uh, thanks for taking time to call in, man. Oh, and I know you're going for Dallas, but go Rams. Uh, we'll see, man. I'll, I'll check update on the score. I haven't seen it. We'll see what's going down. All right, man. All right, thanks, Mike. All right, bye-bye. Yeah, and see, that's the thing, guys. That's the thing. You are free to express your opinion here. And if you don't agree with the caller, put it in the chat. It's okay. It's, it's good to argue. Uh, and by argue, I mean constructive arguing. You know, we're not just going to call each other names or something like that. But we, we all want the Canes to win. And some of us have different opinions on the best way to get to the promised land again. And that's okay. It's fine. But we're going to talk it out. Let's say we're going to hash it out right now and see what everybody wants. So tell, tell me this, guys. It's, it's, we're going on three hours. Do we continue and take more phone calls, or are you guys wanting to call it tonight? It's 9 p.m. It's 9 p.m. We've been streaming for three hours. We were going to stream the NFL game, but things just got too hectic over here. So just let me know. There's a lot of new people in here tonight. Uh, I, I would like to give people a chance to express their opinion on this, the, the QB situation. I do want to address the last few donations in case I missed them because I've been tied up on the phone and stuff, which is good. I'm glad you guys are calling in. But uh, Huff Huff with the $2 donation. This is what it takes. Thank you for that. Uh, actually, I was you. mentioning your last one. You just donated sorry, again. Me. Let's make it six hours. Huff Huff says, let's make it six hours. We might just stream all night, Huff Huff. I don't know. We'll see how long Canes fans, how passionate you guys really are if you're still here at 6 a.m. We'll see. 
Uh, and MDC again, in case I missed yours. Thank you for that donation, my friend. Thank you. Uh, we'll go ahead. We'll take another call then. We'll take another call. You guys are so Miami Hurricanes fans, man. Mm, I'm proud to call you guys family, man. Let's, let's take this call. Let's take this call. Terry mean? King, thank you I'm for that $2 dono, dono, my friend. Thank you for that. All right. Looks like we got 772 uh, area code on the line. Who do we have on the phone, man? Yeah, what's up, bro? This is Robbie. What's going on? Are you calling in to uh, talk about this QB situation we have here? Yeah, man, I want to make a statement at first. I think that that if we get Jalen Hurts and Jeff Thomas, I know it seems like a little bit of a reach, but I'm thinking like a top seven finish. Okay, yeah, that's that. I, I, I have not heard anybody throw any numbers like that out there yet uh, as far as any rankings or anything like that. So that that is definitely a bold statement. I got a lot of people saying 772, uh, that you're repping 772. So uh, apparently there are some other people that uh, live not too far from you, man. Hopefully. So you, you, um, I, I take it then, of course, based on what you just said, that you are all for uh, Jalen coming to the U? Yeah, I'm definitely. I think that he did good work at Alabama. So especially with his quarterback coach that convinced him to stay there, I think that they would be a good match. And I take it also you're okay with giving JT a second chance at the U? Oh, of course. He's in, he's NFL talent right when he declares for the draft. Yeah, I actually would agree with you on that just based on, I mean, even chat at you or, or chat both, correct me if I'm wrong, I think that Jeff Thomas was our leading receiver or close to it when he left, correct? He probably was, honestly. I think that he had the the – the most yardage uh, out of the wide receiver group. Yeah, people are confirming it. You, I, I got, yeah, I wouldn't you, be surprised. You guys fact check for me. Yeah, so, I mean, he's he, he could play on Sundays if he will get his head on straight and, and focus on school and football, most definitely. Yeah, I think that. But, I mean, the defense has been, you could tell by last year, they were elite, one of the best defenses in the country. If the offense would have just played up to par, I think that – Seven and six definitely wouldn't have been the record. It would have been a lot better. <laughs> you don't have to disclose this if you don't want. Huff Huff wants to know what your name is. He says he might know you. I don't know. Maybe you guys can talk about that in the chat a little bit. <laughs> uh, my name is uh, Robbie. Robbie. Okay, I got you. Huff Huff was wanting to know. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's either way, either way, it's going to be interesting no matter what happens. Um, because I said oh, yeah, with, this, a, with this transfer, there's a lot of hype around the program. Yeah, it, it, it's going to continue, and it's only going to grow from here. Honestly, I don't know what's going to happen right right before spring and stuff kicks off. It's just going to be absolutely insane to be a Miami fan. Yeah, I, and I, I especially like that Manny's going after all these transfers and getting these older guys in. Yep, and I'm it really it, it really makes a statement that they're kind of in win now mode. Yep, I'm I'm all for utilizing this transfer portal, man. Uh, I, I think yeah. it's it, it's great. It's really good. We we nailed that down that uh, Buffalo wide receiver, uh, the USC and uh, USC uh, safety, safety yeah. man. I mean, I'm all for it. Bring, bring, bring them in, you know. Get get them over here. Yeah, but I think that I think it'd probably be. I think Jalen has a pretty good chance of coming. That's just my guess. I got you. Yeah, man. And like I said, I, that's what we've got the, the phone line open for, man, is just to, to voice your opinion and uh, see what the chat thinks. See if they agree or disagree with you. Yeah. Yeah, I, I appreciate you calling in, my man. I don't want to cut you off. Is there anything no, else fine. you wanted, wanted to say? No, that's pretty much it. Gotcha, gotcha. So another another Miami fan on the Jalen train. Once hurts uh, to come to Miami. I, I appreciate you calling in, man. All right, thank you. All right, thanks, man. Have a good night. All right, let me address a few of these right quick. Some people were asking, a Toxic Michael asking how he can call in. It's this number right here, my friend, 865-229-4131. I'm trying to get to as many calls as possible uh, because every time I, I hang up, I get four or five calls at the same time. Uh, I wanted to see Slim Shady. What were you mentioning um, about Perry, about starting versus UF? Oh, man, I can't find it, man. See, people were saying Jalen Hurts is not guaranteed the job. Manny says it's an open competition, but I don't think, I don't think, this is my opinion, 
Tell, tell me, I know we've already talked about it a lot tonight. Unless they tell Jalen Hurts that he is probably getting the job, I don't see why he would come to the U. Why would he come sit on the bench? He is going to come to Miami if they say, hey, we've looked at your resume. Dan Enos is here as well, so we know the type of system he's going to put in place. You're a good fit for it. You're most likely our guy. Otherwise, he's he's not going to. And like I said, yeah, Tony, like exactly like what Tony said, he may not even be coming at all. We don't know. It, it's all just speculation. But here, here's what I will say, Canes fans. Here's what I will say. Either way, I know that it's speculation. I know that it's rumors. But tell me in the comment section right now as I say this. Tell me if I'm wrong. It feels darn good to be able to even talk about players potentially coming to the U. Because right now, if we were in the boat we were in at the end of this season and CMR was still the head coach, we had no OC, you best believe players would not even be considering the U. Tell me I'm wrong. It feels so good to even have potential. for play- that, that, that Not that it's just a bunch of fan speculation. They're coming to the campus and visiting. It is actually a, a change. Whether, whether you want him or not, I'm just saying that the U is hyped up right now. Do we need to rebuild a little bit? Yes. Is it going to be somewhat of a, a lengthy process? We're going to see. But I'm just excited right now. That, that's why we've been streaming for how, how long? Three hours and five minutes. Can I get a 305 in the chat? We've been streaming for three hours and five minutes. This was going to be a one-hour stream. I'm just going to let you guys know. This is going to be a one-hour stream, and we're going on over three hours. There's so much hype around the program right now, man. Everybody everybody wants to talk about it. Everybody is talking about it. We're the hottest program in college football. Man. Okay, let's take this call. All right, looks like we've got uh, – oh, no, they hung up. Just kidding. Just kidding. We'll take a few more calls, guys. Uh, and again, hey, Huff Huff, thank you for the $2. And Terry King, thank you for the $2 as well. We got 305s everywhere, man. All I see is, is 305s. So let's take this 407 real quick. And then 904, you can call back in as well. All right, looks like we've got 407 uh, on the line. Who do we have on the phone, my man? Hey, what's up, Coot? This is Opalaka 74, man. What's going on, bro? Yo, bro, man, this Jalen Hurt thing, man, I'm not a fan of it because it's a one-year thing. All right. Hey, I'm, I'm all for I, I want to see as many sides of this as possible. I've had about five or six calls say yes, and you're only the second person to say no. So uh, I, I, I know you just said one and done, uh, but feel free to elaborate. What, what, is it just the one and done thing that you don't like? or what, what No, exactly it's, it's is not. It? It's not that. It's because we don't have the line that Alabama have. Alabama have like a pro offensive line, you know, that NFL talent. We don't have that at the U. And Jalen is not that good of a passer as far as accuracy. Everybody that he hit, they were like wide open. So you think, that if, go in- you think that if he comes to Miami, that he potentially would not be as good as he was at Alabama? No. I okay. definitely, yeah, I'm not, I'm not on board with that one. No, he's not going to be good as people think he is. Because, you know, it's, it's like Tom Brady. He's great with the, with the Patriots. Send him to the Browns and see what he does. <laughs> that, that's, you know, a, that's, a, that's a pretty good analogy, I will say. I haven't heard yeah, anybody use that it's one. Like, yeah, it's, it's, it's like I don't know why people saying that, oh, he's going to help a recruiting. What recruit's going to want to come because he's there for one year? They're going to be like, oh, by the time I get there, he's gone. So I don't know what sense that makes at all. You know, let's go ahead and just build a bomb of what we have there now. Now, do you With have Perry. do you have an opinion on? I know this is difficult. At least for me personally, when people give me this question, it, it's very difficult to answer. But I, I'll ask it anyways um, because I, I don't feel like we've seen enough of Perry and Williams because Perry's just been tossed in kind of some bad situations. Williams, we just haven't I seen agree. enough of, of course. Do you favor one of those two guys, or are you just a fan yeah, of I favor. open competition? Or I'm a fan of open competition between the three that we have right now because we've seen what Perry can do. You know, but those bad play calling that Mark Rick was putting that kid in, man, that was horrible, man. Come on. He's using the 1993 Charlie Ward, you know, playbook that's outdated. You're not going to win in the 2000 with that. No motions. 
you know, come on now. It's easy for a defensive coordinator what, to figure that out. What oh, was that first football game? Home and, that first football <laughs> game that ever came out, Tecmo Bowl or something like that? Yeah, you had like Tecmo four plays Bowl. You <laughs> yeah, you know, come on. You know, clap one time. What happened? Trevor Holmes goes to the right side. Okay, they're running to the left. Clap another time. He goes to the left side. They run right. Come on. It's no motions, no nothing. The best thing that happened for us right now is Manny Diaz fired the whole offensive staff. Yes, I will say I, 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 applaud, I applauded Manny Diaz for that move. That took some guts. That took some Oh, my cojones. God. I Let's just be real here. I it. I love it. Do you hear anybody complaining about, oh, guess what? They should have kept this person on offense. They should have kept this offensive staff. You didn't hear nobody coming up here and telling you they should have kept one yeah, of those offensive yeah. staff. Heck no. The only, the thing the we only, did was get rid of them. The only people that I, that I heard uh, some of the players and stuff wanting to keep was Hartley and Duggins. But honestly, Dug- let's be real. If you look at the play from those positions, I, don't, I, I know there are other underlying issues. I'm just saying. I don't think we were that explosive in special teams necessarily. Uh, exactly. And I do think that the wide receivers, I know all the quarterback situation, all the play calling, I get it. But I'm just saying there were a lot of drop balls this season. Uh, and Too a many lot drop of balls. It, it just, we, we needed a reboot, a complete yes, restart. Yes, we, we, we needed a rebuild on offense. On offense. On offense yeah, we necessary. need a rebuild. Yeah, I agreed. Once he fired everybody, I was celebrating yep. <laughs> because there's no way we were going to succeed on off. How do we have a, the number two defense, a championship caliber defense, but we got a Christian Nun Academy offense? Yep. It's, it's not going to work, man. It's just not going to work. And then you start burning out the defense because they got to constantly get on the field, constantly get on the field. Then the people like, oh, oh, what gassed. happened to that number two defense? They're gas. That's what it's called. You know, they're gas. They're constantly on the field. They get no break. And then special team was horrible because look who our punter was. Yep. That was another problem. Which, which, is field why position. which is why I'm so hyped for Louie Headley because people people yeah, were exactly. like, oh, people were like, oh, Coop, wait, why are you making such a big deal about getting that interview with the punter? And I said, people underestimate special teams, man, because exactly. it, the, the punt game is so – important in college Critical. football today i mean if you're if you're all if your opponent is always in bad field the position 50. i'm talking they've always got 90 yards to go Great. 80 yards to go exactly. you know this, they have to put together that's huge and people do i what do you do you know i don't you may not watch nfl um i watch the, nfl the, the I, watch, punter, I played football. the punter that played for the raiders for a while that everyone loved because of his energy he's not with the raiders anymore um yeah I think uh, yeah. I think he was Florida. I think he was a quarter. He was like, a punter. He, he, he was Florida always State. dancing. He was always bringing energy yeah. to punting and special teams and stuff. I feel like we we need more of that um, yeah. because people just look at it as oh what whatever it's just punting it's just 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 the kid no but it, 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 it can change the game it can change yeah, the it can entire game. the game because guess what it's harder to go ninety something yards than it is to go forty yeah Marquette King somebody put it in the chat yeah Marquette King. Yeah, that guy brings a whole different level of energy to punting in football. It's crazy, and we need something like that. And Louis Headley could be that guy. Let me tell you, because when exactly. I talked to him, like I said, I talked to him for probably a good ten minutes yeah, I before seen I started the interview. recording, and we I talked to him for a good twenty minutes after the interview. Yeah, he, I, I listened to that interview. He, he's I listened so pumped. to that interview. He's so pumped. Yes, he is. He is hyped up, and I like his little accent also. He's yeah, yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> but yeah, man, it's just people just they kind of downgrade the special team. If you're giving the the opposite team good field position, like I said, it's harder to go 90-something yards than it is to go 40-something yards. Oh, yeah. Because every time Fields was punting that ball, I was like, oh, boy, here we go. Yeah, you know, I, I used to. They're that's sit there I, on the 50. We stripped him they're of on his title, uh, Fearless Feagles. Uh, for people oh, who, my who gosh, Feagles were People killing who me. have not hung out in the live streams for the games on here. I don't know if you've ever hung out over here while we do the live yeah, game streams and stuff. Yeah, I used to always say, my man, Fearless Feagles, this season, no, I covered my eyes every single punt. I did it at the FSU game. When I when I went to the game, everyone was looking yeah, at I me. I was, I was standing there like this, covering my eyes every time Feagles would punt. And I told my wife, yeah, I said, me too. I, I turn away arm, every time he punts. Yeah, I said, tap my every arm Every time when he punts, over. I just turn away. Like, I'm just like, oh, great, here we go. Yeah, I'm, I'm all you know, for, it's, it's horrible. I'm all for showing support for players because obviously, you know, they're a cane. They chose Miami as their school, but there does come a point where you have to put in a player that puts you in a better position to win. And I don't know what was going on with Spicer and Fegels, but there had to be somebody better. I don't care if we need to change. Someone in a different position. We need.
need a change. That's how I seen it. We need a change. They were, they were, oh man, it was a thorn in my, my spine. Yeah. That nonsense. But yeah. farthest, farthest, you know, people saying that, oh, well, you know, it hurts again about, oh, what he did at Alabama. He knows the system and all that stuff there. Let me tell you something. He got beat out of his position in the championship. That's what he did. You know, people's like, oh, well, they're talking about how Jeff Thomas, oh, well, he left. Why? And I heard some people say, why take him back? He quit on us. Well, you know what? Go, you know, guess what? Um, Hurts, he's running from competition. Why not work and try to get your starting position back? How about that? We, don't, we really don't need him. I'm good with the three quarterbacks we have because, you know what I'm saying, they can build chemistry with those wide receivers. You know, Perry got a raw deal. And people making a big deal because he was flashing money and gold grill. Look, he, look. I understand we're to you, and a lot of people hate us, and we're always, you know, listed as the bad boys of college. But he broke no laws, right. you know, yeah, at all. In the South, no. yeah, I'm from Miami, and I live here in Orlando, and that's what we do when we're young. We flash money, you know, when everybody wants to go. When you're young, you know, you do you do stuff. People sit up here taking, oh well, blah blah blah. Now, father, the Snapchat thing, I don't know too much about that. I've heard I, I, something yeah. about it. I thought it was kind of childish with that, and I think he needs to stay away from Snapchat because he's going to get himself in a lot of trouble behind yeah. that because he has to understand that you're the face of a university. The light is always going to be on. The camera is always going to be on you. It might don't be TMZ, but it's mm-hmm. always going to be on you because, you know, you repping the U as it is. And if for some reason, college football hates us. But we are so good for college football. Yep. We, we are necessary. They uh, need us. Yes, and I agree. I think Jeff Thomas needs to come back. Yeah. Now, the Bruce thing, I'm kind of nervous with Bruce. Yeah, Sam Bruce. I'm kind of nervous people, with him. And I, I get it. I, yeah. I do get the argument there. I mean, I do. Yeah. Um, that, that was I a little get, different. That was actual, real legal issues uh, yeah, with him getting I, I arrested kinda and nervous. things like that. Yeah, I got nervous because he got in trouble in high school. You know, with the gun situation, posting pictures and beefing yeah. with some kid over a girl. And then you come to you and then you get caught up in that. You know, you got to understand there's a megascope on you when you come to the you. And, you know, I, you know, I believe in second chances. Like I said, I do believe in second chances, but I'm yeah. just going to tell you, he makes me nervous. Yeah, so I, I still I think say, yeah. I, I know that that doesn't mean anything because people can lie straight to your face. Exactly. But I, I think that if they sit down with Manny and, like I said, with Blake or whoever needs to be there and just see, just just gauge it a little bit because you, you can kind of read people a little bit. And yeah. I, I feel like if Manny Manny sits down with him, I don't see any problem with sitting down with him and, and you know, him saying, hey, I want to come no, back. I agree Manny with you says, on that. Manny says, mm, no, nah, I'm sorry, I just can't. Then I don't see anything wrong with that. Just just sit down with him I don't either. See. I don't either. I feel Jeff Thomas got a raw deal. You know, he was our most explosive player that we had on the team. I feel like he got a raw deal. You know, because just look, honestly, look at that honestly system, I, like I said, I, I would like to see potentially Sam Bruce come back. But honestly, if, if they don't think that he's serious, if, you know, it's still going to be an issue with him, move on to the next guy. Because right now we've got a lot of guys who, who want to come in and play and actually focus on football and win games. So exactly is what it is. You know, I agree. It is what it is, man. My man, I agree with you 100% on that. It's just, you know, the Hurts thing was kind of hurting me that these people were talking about bringing him in or bringing him in. I'm like, look, he played behind that big line. You know, that's that's a pro line. You look at that Alabama line. I mean, it Everything is. that Alabama got is big. Their, their linebacker could be your average defense in. Which is what I kind of you know, think hurt them a little bit against Clemson. Exactly, uh, they, they look because they couldn't slow. deal with speed. Yeah, they couldn't deal with the speed of Clemson. Yeah. And that's what I told. That's why I bet it against them. Yeah, they were you know, getting because sliced I knew dice, Clemson was going to beat them. Yeah, yeah, they were sliced because the speed, they couldn't deal with that speed. Those guys are really big. And that offensive line, you're not it's, you're not going to get to Jalen Hurts in that offensive line. You know, but you get to the U, our line is not that big. You know, and we're not that experienced, you know, saying I'm not trying to take a shot at our line. Oh, I understand. But come on, yeah. be real, man. We're not as good as Alabama offensive line. Yeah, like I said, there, there's a difference in just taking shots like at people and then evaluating them and being like, this is not, you know, this or that or putting us in the best position to win. So, uh, no, I definitely, you can definitely speak your mind on that for sure. Yeah, the one and done argument with, uh, oh, he's going to bring recruits, oh, recruits is going to come. I'm like, what sense does that make? How is he going to bring recruits? If recruits say, oh, Jalen Hurts there, I want to go there. Guess what? He's only there for a year. What sense does that make? 
They're not going to come because, oh, he was there. Oh, Jalen Hurts played there. I'm going to go there. No, they're not. They're going to come to you. They're going to come to you for our tradition yeah. and the players that we put in the NFL. You look at Alabama players, when they get to the NFL, they don't pan out like hurricane players. Yeah, now I find it real interesting. Man. We'll see, man. When we go back, remember the timestamp when you called in. It was at about – Three hours and five oh, yeah. minutes. Go back and check out the chat. Some people agree with you. Some people don't. Hey, so we'll dude, see. We'll I've been, see. I've been. As soon as you came on live, I've been on since. Since you've been I, on live, so I you, appreciate if it. If you check your phone, if you check your phone, you're gonna, you're gonna see a lot of calls from four oh seven. Yeah, I appreciate. It. Like I said it, it gets difficult because I, right, I don't have a way to take multiple calls or have people. On I hold. feel you. So literally, hey, I, I didn't I'm, give up. I'm gonna tell you what I do. It pops up on this other screen right here. I have five calls. I say, any, I mini, mini, mo, I choose you, and I pick I one. That's what I do. I understand. I appreciate it, man. Keep <laughs> yeah, repping to you, man. Absolutely, man. This All day, every day. Have a good one, man. All right, man. To All right, thank you. Later. On the side of your helmet. Let's talk about Enos and Hickson. Hey, we can talk a little bit more about that, Huff Huff. A uh, ton of donations tonight, Huff Huff. Thank you for that, my man. Now, you've gone above and beyond tonight. Uh, so, thank you for that, Huff Huff. Uh, so, yeah, we, we can bring up that again uh, with the, the, the little – and I'm going to turn off the phone line for just a sec, just a second, guys. Um, the, the graphic that Kane's football put out, uh, it's not that uh, – give me just a second, guys. Uh, we'll, we'll take some more phone calls. Uh, let me turn it off for just a second, though. Um, honestly, the graphic – and, again, guys, we can agree to disagree. If you, if you don't agree, feel free to put it in the comment section – or call in. We don't. We don't have to end on agreeing with anything, uh, other than that we all want to win football games, and that's a given. So you don't. You don't have to call in to tell me that. We we all know that. That's what we want to do. Um, but who who Huff Huff said uh, Enos and Hickson? I didn't pull up the Enos graphic. Um, if you guys check this out, um, the Canes football Twitter put together some excellent uh, graphics. Uh, for what these coaches have done in the past. Uh, if you look at the coaching profile for Dan Enos, uh, we've got here served as Alabama's associate head coach uh, and QB coach. Again, as everyone has stated, not the OC. A lot of people think that he was the OC for some reason. Um, he oversaw the development of the 2018 Heisman finalist and SEC Offensive Player of the Year, Tua, of course. Uh, more than 20 years of coaching experience, uh, including 10 plus years as a play caller. Uh, he was also the head coach at Central Michigan for four years. Um, we've also got, um, during his first three years at Arkansas, uh, had 3,000 yard passer and 1,300 yard rusher. Uh, so he was the, uh, man, I'm going blank here, the OC and quarterbacks coach from 2015 to 2017 uh, at Arkansas. And yes, he would have been promoted to the OC this year at Alabama. I actually have the phone line off for the moment, guys. Uh, I'll turn it back on in just a second. Uh, and then we've got um, five offensive players selected in the 2016 NFL Draft tied for the second most nationally. Um, that's, that's really a good graphic that Canes football put together there. And then we also have them for the other hires today as well. Eric Hickson, we touched on him earlier. Uh, you guys can see the graphic there for yourself. Uh, I'm starting to go hoarse a little bit from talking so much. Uh, you guys can see it there. The argument with Hickson, again, uh, I'll just cover it real quick, was uh, people were complaining about the experience. I'm okay with it. He's a South Florida guy. I think he can recruit the area. I'm okay with him not having a super long resume. Uh, I'm, I'm okay with it. I, I don't think he's completely just learning on the job. Uh, so I, I'm okay with that hire. That's, that's okay with me. Uh, and then the other guy, another home run hire for me, in my opinion, Butch Berry. Uh, th this is a good hire for us. Uh, coming from the Buccaneers, four years of experience in the NFL. Um, five years. This is huge right here. Don't underestimate this one, the third bullet point. Don't underestimate this. Spent five years as a member of Dan Enos' staff at Central Michigan. I know that's been a while back. That was 2010 uh, to 2014, roughly. Uh, but there is some chemistry there. These guys have worked together. That's a huge hire. Canes fans, don't underestimate that. Um, Butch Berry is, is a very good hire. But yeah, that might give you a little more info uh, on that Huff Huff. Uh, if anybody already saw that, just hang tight with me for a moment. I did want to cover that for people who weren't here earlier. 
So it looks like some people are starting to file out, guys. Uh, we're at three and a half hours now. Um, we could take maybe one or two more phone calls if you guys want. What's going on, Carrie? Uh, or we could just wrap it up because, uh, again, we are going on about three and a half hours. So uh, you guys let me know. I'll link the Cowboys game again because we were going to stream it. And uh, we, things just got too crazy over here. So there's a link to the Cowboys game if you're trying to watch it. I, I'm not, I'm not going to lie. Okay, I am hype. I am hype. But I am getting a, a, a little tired. I'm getting a little tired. Uh, we've been on for about three hours, three and a half hours. Three and a half hours, actually, now. Yeah, whoo. Long stream, long stream. I know, Steven. See, that's the thing. I, I can continue to talk canes for a this long is what time. Take. I will take your you? call, 973. Sorry, your helmet. All nighter coop, lol. Eric Birch, my man. I hope you don't have to work tomorrow, Eric. Because we, we, <laughs> it's like, it's like, I, it's nice to know that there are other Canes fans who can't sleep. Because, listen, I don't know about you guys, but you can call in Conundrum. Let me know your area code if you're going to call in so I know. Listen, ever since Manny Diaz was hired, your boy Coop has not had more than like four hours of sleep because the first thing I do is I roll out of bed, I pull out my phone, and I start scrolling through Twitter. I start scrolling through Instagram. That's my life right now, every day. Every day, that's my life. And I mean that, I, I, I mean that in a good way, the best way possible. Man. Okay, so let me take, uh, we've got another call coming in here. Uh, looks like a 305. Nice to know that there are other Kings fans who can't. Sleep. Looks like we got 305 on the line. Now, who do we have on the phone, my man? Yo, it's Hayden Conundrum Records. What's good? What's going on, my man? Chilling, man. Chilling. How you doing? I feel you, bro. I feel you. We got, we right, we're about to pull an all nighter with this thing, man. So. Hey, buck, yeah, you're going strong, bro. You look like a marathon out of here. But buckle up, man. So, uh, uh, are are you calling to talk about the QB situation, or I, I'll let you have the floor, man. Whatever you wanted to discuss. I'm really happy about Enos. I think it's it's great that we can get somebody from Alabama. Now we have insight on what they're doing, how they're recruiting, how they're able to win so many games, how to dominate, and I love that we got a pro coach on the O line. The O line, Barry. Yep. Yeah. That's a good I hire. Think really need, good hire. I agree, 100 percent, Coop. The fact that we have somebody that was just working with a professional organization now he can come and teach our players. I think recruits want to come and and be under learn from somebody that can get them to the next level. And I think if we have an NFL coach, then why not? You know. Yep. I mean, because for a lot of people, uh, the 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 idea for them is to try to make it to the NFL, you know, to make a career out of football. Uh, so that, that is a big thing. Like you said, he, he, co he has coached at the next level. So he, he knows the, the kind of work ethic and things that are involved to play at that level. Um, so I do think that, sure. that that is a huge bonus for us. Did you see that he has a background in the Midwest, I think in like the Minnesota area around there? Uh, I don't know. I don't think I saw that, no. Yeah, if, if I'm if I'm correct, I'm pretty. I'm from what I read that he has a connection in the Midwest, so that could really help us with recruiting too. Because we need to start getting those those alignment from out there, the ones that go to Wisconsin and Ohio State, those big alignment. We need to start getting some of those. So what do you? Uh, I, I, I'm I'm putting you on the spot a little bit here. You you don't have to answer if you don't want. Because I know a lot of people in the chat know who you are, Conundrum Records. Uh, what, what's your side on the Jalen Hurts thing? I know people are saying, stop talking about Jalen Hurts. We, we won't go deep into it. I, I just want to know, are you for him coming to the U or against it? All right, so this is the way I'm looking at it. He's, his record is 23-3, and three, I believe. It's something close I, to that, 23-2 and two or 23-3. and three. So it's, something, you're, it's very close to that, yes. I thought that he won the national championship game in the 2018 one, the one uh, right before this one. I thought that he was the one that won it, but I watched the highlights, and he started, I believe, but then the Tua guy, Tua guy mm -hmm. came in and won it, if, I, if I'm correct. So it's, 
I, I was really, at the beginning, I was hyped on him because I thought he won that national championship game, that he was the guy that got it done for them. And, right. and you know, he was, but I watched their highlights and it, it, it was a, it wasn't the best quality highlights, but from what I saw, he didn't, he didn't win it. So the way I'm looking at it, if he can come and Jaron stays, I want him to come. But if he's going to come and Jaron's going to leave, then I don't really want him to come. I know that's a bit idealistic. You know, I guess there's no way to really know how that will play out. Right, yeah. Maybe, but that that's pretty much the way I'm looking at it. Because if Jaron's going to stay, I think that um, Jalen Hurts is going to give us the best chance to win right now. He'll be out next year, and he'll be able to teach Perry and Jaron what he knows. And he's already worked with the OC. He's already worked with Dan Enos. If he if he comes through, I think he can give us a better chance to to play. I, I it kind of hurts me to say because I I feel that Jaron and and Kosey Perry are real like real Canes. Like they really want to play for the Canes. You know mm-hmm. they're like, you know they're they're like real. It, it seems like they're really about it. And Jalen Hurts is kind of just it seems like after opportunistic like the best situation for him. Right. But if he if he can come through, he I uh, yeah I think he can give us the best chance to win and. If we can have a great season this year, that's going to bring recruits. We know that recruits want to come where people are winning. Yeah, I mean, that's, again, the same thing we touched on. Um, if you win, they will come, literally. Uh, so so if, if we if we just are honest, I think, do you think that Jalen Hurts gives us the best chance to win? Or do you think Perry or Jaron would, would give us a better chance to win this year? See, my issue with it is, and, cause, and see, man, trust me, I, I appreciate the question. I, a lot of people get mad because they 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 say that I'm kind of just riding the fence on it because I I I don't care to offend people with my answer on that because again we all just want the Canes to win so I, I don't care and if it's, people it's all get speculation mad we really don't know right see that's my thing my problem with the Jalen Hurts situation is kind of similar to what you said if he comes in and we pretend, it, it's po- very possible that Perry and Williams would maybe even leave at the very least I think Williams leaves just because he already mentioned he you know was interested in transferring potentially and his dad pushes him pretty hard let's be real I don't know mm-hmm. if you guys know what his dad like his dad wants him playing now now I know that doesn't mean anything uh, as far as coaches mm-hmm. actually starting him but his dad you know wants him in the NFL so he needs to start playing his college career now instead of sitting on the bench so Jay, Jay, or, uh, Jaron Williams could potentially transfer my my problem is is it, it's that same argument everyone's saying of if Jalen Hurts comes to the U, I want it to be a real legit open competition. If he comes to the U, I don't want it to be because he's guaranteed to start. And the problem is, like I said, I don't think he would come to the U unless he is kind of, sort of, almost guaranteed to start. So it puts, yeah, he'll, it he'll put, pretty much start. It I puts think. me right in the middle. I don't hate the idea of him coming here, but I don't mm-hmm. love it either because it could cause transfers. And then it, we're kind of in a weird spot. Not that we couldn't get other QBs, but these guys have already committed to the U. They've already put in some mm-hmm. time here. So it, it honestly, I'm, I'm on. I, honestly, I'm on the fence. I don't hate either side. So I'm kind of sitting in the middle, saying I'll roll with whatever happens. And I, I, I hate to be that guy. I hate to be that guy <laughs> because people get mad and say you won't choose a side, but. It, it, it's I wish just, it's difficult for me. I wish people would would see, or I don't know. Jaron also could maybe be a little patient that he's only a freshman because he did red shirt, so he is pretty much a, re- a freshman, you know. So he has time. I yeah. know. I understand that he his dad wants him to play. That that's a good that's a good point. I didn't know that. That's that's a good point. But if he can learn, like let's say we get to the playoff, and he 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 he's. He's back up in in the playoff, and next year we're getting the best wide receivers, the best O linemen, and all these people are coming. Now he has a chance to win a national title. Whereas if Jalen Hurts maybe doesn't come, we're not in that position, and then he's not set up as well. So if if he's if he maybe looks at it that way and is patient, he could be set up to win a national title. If Jalen Hurts comes one and done, gets us to the playoff, maybe gets us to the national title game, we put up a we put up a good fight in there or win it. You know, he's sitting pretty as a as a sophomore junior, you know? Yeah, and see that's the thing. Both sides have a pretty valid argument for me. And like you said, I'm I'm glad you see my point when I say it's all just speculation. because uh, a lot of people yeah. get really, really heated about it, which is is fine because we're we're Hurricanes fans, we're passionate. Uh but it's all just anybody's guess. I mean, there's no telling. Do you, 
I mean, do you know what formations Enos runs? Because I saw a little bit of what he runs. It seems like he has multiple backs in there, which is making me really happy because we have yeah. Cameron Davis and Lingard, and I cannot wait to see them play at the right. same time. Yeah, the the biggest thing with that, I, I don't want to say anything much to that just yet. The reason being is I, I've seen situations like this where someone comes into a different school to be the OC, and they could potentially change it up from what they did in the past at other schools. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, he's probably going to run something a little similar he, because that's what he's used to. It's what he does. But it might get changed up a little bit. Uh, so it, it's kind of hard to say for sure on that. Really, we'll know a heck of a lot more when spring It's going to be way better than up. Rick. I, oh, I'll gosh, tell you that. Yeah. Oh, It'll man. be way better I, than Rick. We're going to yeah. have misdirection, read option. We're going to have yes. – I can't, I can't wait. Manny Diaz made it a point that he wanted to bring someone on the staff that could – confuse other defenses he said he wanted to have a guy yeah. calling plays and designing plays that the defense really just never knew what was going on so i i i, I trust him in that he he would hot bring in someone who's going to do something like that so we'll, we'll we see. all knew what what rick was going to run every single play oh, this we, guy's gonna have show different different uh formations he's going to show different setups from what i saw at arkansas he had different the tight end was in different positions he had the the running backs at different positions and and motion like the camera was filming at one person and then the other person just ran out the side and one highlight I saw like we need to get people in open space we have so much speed yep. if we can get our players in open space we're gonna be in a way better position yeah and I do hope that people are considering the fact and I mentioned this because I saw where Slim Shady Keynes had said that where he said. Uh, we won't be set up for playoffs in year two. Nice fantasy, but not reality. Canes fans do have to be ha realistic to an extent. Obviously, we're always hopeful every year. I know I'm getting off track a little bit. But like I said, anything less than national champion, it's national championship or bust for Canes fans always. That's how it's always been. That's how it's always going to be. But you also do have to have in the back of your head that we have a new head coach. We have entirely new offensive staff. And we have an entirely new scheme that's going to be implemented. Uh, everybody is seeing this stuff for the first time, and they're just learning it. Uh, so you have to have slightly realistic expectations in the back. Of oh, the yeah, no, as well. no, for sure. What, what I was saying is if Jalen Hurts came, because every single year that he played, he's been in the playoff. Right. So I think, I think that if he uh, – that's what I was trying to say, that if he – I was just trying to paint the scenario that if oh, Jalen you, Hurts comes and does well, like if that was just – creating that scenario that if he comes and he gets us to a playoff we're going to what I was trying to say is we're going to get way more recruits which is better for Jaron when he's a sophomore junior and then if he wants to stay his senior year that's what I, I was you. trying to say I got you got you yeah I just meant not not necessarily specifically to what you said but just people in general because mm -hmm. I, I know that yeah. you know people they're going to be okay hear me out they're going to be some new fans arriving if <clears throat> ben, ben wagon you, you <clears throat> sorry I had something in my throat you know what I'm saying uh, so th there are going to be some fans that come over and, you know, are thinking, oh, national championship, Canes are going to go. Heck, yeah, I'm a Canes fan. And then they're all going to be jumping ship when we don't go. So, uh -huh. you know, we we, we got to have realistic Don't be a fan later. Yeah, exactly. There you go. There you go. But uh, so, who, sorry, you, how do you think we can improve our O-line? Because I, I just feel like everybody's saying, oh, we could be stacked at wide receiver. We could be stacked at quarterback. We could be stacked at – at running back, but if we don't have an O line, I, I don't see us really doing anything. No, I I think realistically, um, I, it comes to we. I spoke on this earlier on the phone. I forgive me for not knowing who it was. I don't remember who it was that I was talking to on the phone about the O line. Dang it, I can't remember who this it was. Is what it takes. Maybe he's still here in the chat. To where do uh, you? I'm gonna let it read out this I'm donation real quick, man, and I'll address it. People call when he is ready. Quit being right, rude. Cool. Thank you, Eric. Thank you for that $2 donation, man. Th thank you. Um, I think, me personally, with the O-line, we need to do a little better with recruiting, yes, um, because with serials and stuff, well, the recruiting kind of sucked, in my opinion. That, that's just my opinion. But I do think for our O-line, technique and fundamentals need to be better, which will happen with the, the new guy that we have coming in, with Barry. Um, and yeah. also just just stronger 
because uh, the guy who mentioned it about it, it does size does, isn't everything. It, it does help sometimes. It does help. I mean, obviously, you don't want me in there on your O line, 150 pounds soaking wet. <laughs> you're screwed. You know, you, the, our quarterback's getting sacked every time if I'm on the O line. But I believe in you, Coop. You hold it down. But you okay? I thought it was Slim Shady that was saying that. Yeah, you need guys that are. You, you can be not as big and be much stronger if you have the right strength and conditioning program in place. And I feel like we like mm-hmm. a little bit of that with Gus. He's a good guy. Don't get me wrong. Um, but we, 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 cause we got, I think Dave Feely is who's coming in. The guy, the strength and I conditioning. Heard, I hear that it's Olympic, Olympic lifting. It's Olympic lifting. And the guy before was more like CrossFit intensity training and the okay. Olympic lifting is going to bring us more strength. That's what I'm hearing. Yeah. Yeah, I think it just comes down to better strength and conditioning, stronger guys on the O-line, and just better technique because we, we were getting pushed around really bad in a lot of games. And, and technique can help compensate a little bit, but then you also need that strength to back it up. So honestly, yeah, I, think, I think that's all sure. we need. Even with the guys we have, people knock them a lot, but I think if we get a coach in place that can coach them up, teach them the technique, and then get them on the right strength and conditioning and nutrition plan, uh, both these guys up a little bit, get them stronger. I think we'll be okay. What about we, we do need better just recruiting how, for the O line in general. How can we bring in more O line and maybe some grad transfers, some like some big boys? Honestly, getting getting um, Butch Berry coming in, I think will help uh-huh. attract uh, better recruits for the O line because he has, like we said, he has NFL coaching experience. I mean, not not yeah. like in his past. That's what he just did. So. Him coming in with knowing what it takes to be in the NFL. I mean, he's coaching an NFL O line. Whether they were super good or not, I don't keep up with the NFL as much. So I, I, the Bucks may have sucked these past five years. I don't know, but uh-huh. he still coached. Um, oh, sorry, somebody trying to call through. Uh, he he still coached at that next level. So I feel like players will look at that and they will say, "Well, this guy's coached guys in the NFL, so maybe he can help get me there." So honestly, I think him being here is that that's why I'm so big on that hire. Because I think that he'll yeah, help attract I like the hire too. recruits and stuff for us, honestly. For sure. So yeah, just I got two more things I wanted to say. So um what I saw another another Kane site doing was they posted the recruits uh social media information. Mm-hmm. Is there a is there a way that we could like collect all the Kane's fans and put them in a put them somewhere where we can like help with recruiting where we can like put the, the people we're trying to flip, like we'll put all their social media uh, usernames and then all the fans can go follow them, let them know like, yo, come to the, you come to the, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Uh, Kane's fans, is there a dude, way we could like, try to do that? It seems like we try to do something like that a little bit. Now I will tell you, and um, I, I'm, telling you this and chat and everybody because and and again i i promise you and i hope you believe me and i hope chat believes me i'm not trying to sound cool by saying this i promise i'm not it's just because i'm on a platform and some people see me here sometimes like i said i have a couple of players numbers and i do talk to them outside of any of this stuff just in general like realists and louis and all them like they'll just text me sometimes and be like yo coop what's up and then we'll just start chatting about something they have told me that they that, that they do I mean, obviously, we know it because they get in trouble for the stuff they do on social media sometimes. They see the tweets. They see the comments. They yeah. see the posts. They do see sure. that stuff. So it does make a little bit of a difference because I can tell you when we were talking about uh, who the, the Clemson transfer, Kelly, when the players and stuff were expressing that they didn't want him coming to the U, he pulled the plug and mm-hmm. didn't even visit. So, and there could have yeah. been underlying causes. There could have been. But I can promise you that based on what they've told me, they do see it. I mean, what, what do you think they're doing when, when, when they're not at practice and they're not – and I'm doing For it here sure. on stream. This is the players. This, it, it's the day and age of social media. So they are on it, and they do see what Kane's fans are saying. Louie told me that he can't believe – the amount of support he's received from Kane's fans, from just comments on his post and liking his stuff and just welcoming him to the U. Now, he said he sent me a text the other night saying th- to say thank you to all you guys that commented on that video. Because I think on the Louie Headley interview, we were at like, let me check and see. There were a lot of comments on it, and pretty much everybody yeah. was welcoming him to the U. And he said, man, I have never felt so welcomed to anything yeah, in my great. life. Yeah, he, he we, was. I, I want to do that. I want to do that with the people we're trying to flip and and like four star, five star people that we're trying to get. 
because I agree with what you're saying that we can make a difference. And, and the, the UM fans are starting to are collect. There's thousands of subscribers on these channels now. There's thousands mm-hmm. of people on these Instagrams, so Instagram profiles. So what we need to do is figure out how we can co- uh, write down all of the usernames of the people we're trying to flip. This like maybe have a website or something, and everybody you? can go to it and then follow those helping. people and and, and talk Castor about Verde, it and, Walsh, and, and let Dorsey, people know how great Toretta, it is to be a king, smiley how face. great Miami is, and, and really bring these people through because we can make a difference. Yep. The last yep. thing I wanted to say okay. was with with that co- collection of Canes fans and and we're basically maybe make a page like Canes for recruiting Canes fans for the best. You know what I'm saying? Something like I that. I got you. Something that is, it's, it, that's the point of it. Like that's the general idea is it's for that specifically. Yeah. Like, like, so where we can start putting out the information, like maybe w- with your, it could be as simple as when you do those posts on YouTube where it's just a picture, mm-hmm. you could yeah, put a picture of, section, of yeah. You could put a uh, uh, the picture of the player and then his his username, and be like, "Hey, this is four star da da da." He's shown interest, and then now we all have it. And the people that really want to, they can go and copy, paste it, put it in the Instagram, Twitter, yeah, find them. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, no, I, I know like I know yeah. once once other pages do it, I, I I go and follow them and I comment and I let them know there's no city like Miami. And you should yeah, definitely you come go. here. The the last thing I wanted to say though was um with that collection of people what we what I want to do is within the rules totally within the NCAA rules mm. I want to see if we can leverage people's resources so there's like there's 150 people watching mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure there's one of those people has something that they they work for a company that we could maybe offer to recruit or we could maybe like I don't know the rules of, of recruiting. Right. But we we got to see if we can maybe start having these fans who have these resources, like uh, showing these recruits, like if you come here, you're going to have a great time. Like you're a family. We're going to, we're going to take care of you. We're going to make sure you have within the rules. You know what I mean? A, a, right. The yeah. Best you got to walk the, the NCAA tightrope there a little bit. But. Yeah. I don't know the rules at all. I'm a bit ignorant on, on exactly what you can do and cannot do. But if, right. if that same, if that same website, could maybe have a page where it lists like what what a fan can do you know if we if we can maximize our fan bases because this is miami bro i'm sure there's hurricane fans with mansions and foreign cars and limitless amounts of money it's uh you know it's not me i can tell you that (laughs) (laughs) but you got you got that limitless passion that, that's what you. matters yeah. you know like you said yeah that, it, that, I, that's what matters now you're bringing we, us all together yeah we definitely have to be you know with stuff like that like i said ncaa is so tight on stuff like that but i i see what you're saying i see what you're saying but uh well, whatever I, we can do to start swaying these kids bringing them here we got because that, that's what's gonna if we have the best talent we, we'll have the best team i got you i got you and it definitely doesn't hurt to get on social media and say hey you know miami's a great place to to play ball and stuff most definitely so, but, uh, all right, brother. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time, Coop. I really appreciate you and everything you're doing, man. For sure. If you, if you need anything, just let me know. All right, brother? Sounds good, man. I appreciate you calling in, bro. All right, bro. Peace. Right, have a good night, man. You too, man. Peace. All right. Uh, I think we will probably cut it there because uh, we're going on almost four hours of streaming tonight, and I thought it was going to be like a one-hour stream. Yeah, it, it's getting late. It's getting late. Um, and I'll probably go over honestly and catch the end of the Cowboys game. Uh, I don't know what's going on over there. Ouch. Okay. Uh, anybody who was looking for it, uh, 20 to seven Rams, uh, killing the Cowboys right now. Ouch. Okay. So, uh, I'll probably head over, head over, watch that a little bit. (laughs) Greg says, let's go for five hours. Uh, listen. I tell everybody, 6 p.m. in Tennessee, uh, Stephen, it's about 10. It's about 10 p.m. over here where I live. Listen, thank you so much for all of the new subscribers tonight. We grew the college football family tonight. I love that. Um, Canes fans are fired up, man. We're excited. We're pumped up about what's in store. Uh, Stay tuned. Make sure you click the little notification bell if you're subscribed to the channel. The reason why I say that is it typically will send you a notification when I go live and the more people we get in here um, the more exciting and more fun these streams are it's not just because I'm looking for big numbers it's because it allows for more interaction between you guys and we can all hang out and chat about this team that we love so much or if you just love college football 
in general. So I, I like to go through and thank every donator that donates every night. There has been a lot tonight. Let me try to do it really quick. Let me try to just say thank you. I'll go through the names real quick. Jeff Thomas wants to come back. Yes, we will keep an eye on it, okay? We'll keep an eye. Yeah, YouTube hasn't been sending out notifications properly, so make sure you click that, though. Just keep an eye. I'll try to let you guys know before the streams happen. Seriously, as we're all filing out, thank you guys so much for the support you show me. I always tell everybody, because I live in Tennessee, listen, I tell everybody, there's no family like Miami Hurricanes family, and I mean that when I say it. Nothing else compares. Nobody can compete with this Canes family. It's the best family, I'm telling you, in college football. It is. Uh, so I'll go through and just thank all of the donators tonight. Uh, if I miss your name, I'm so sorry. I, I promise you that it means a lot to me. Um, Sam Williams, Greg Bush, W, uh, Bobby Brewer, Eric Birch, Eric Boyes, uh, Tommy Perkins Sr., uh, Michelle McPhee, Bobby Hemphill, Rod G, Beast Mode Kane, DJ, Richard Renfro, Slim Shady Canes, uh, Kelly Britton, Anthony uh, Onorado, Liberty City Boy 1, Noel Daddy 42, I think I might have said that one already, uh, Huff Huff with some major donations tonight, uh, Chris Mercer, Robert Suber, Jay Wade, uh, Todd Merritt, CB Savage, uh, of course MDC as always, uh, Terry King, and it looks like that's about it, so like I said, if I skipped over your name, I apologize. Uh, thank you so much, guys, for all the donations. And thank you for the new subs as well. Uh, like I said, we're going to continue to grow the family. Longest stream we've done just talking Canes football. Almost four hours. We're almost at the four-hour mark. Um, appreciate all the love you guys show me tonight. I'm basically just going to play a quick little outro screen. And uh, more streams coming soon. More videos coming soon. Big things coming. Trust me. If, if it gets for sure, if we get the green light that anybody is transferred over, anybody's coming over, anybody's signed, anybody's flipped, we'll go live. I'll make some kind of video, something like that. Like, if you haven't checked out the Louis Headley interview, go check it out um, because he's watching. He's keeping an eye on the comments. And uh, he loves seeing all the warm welcomes from you guys, from the Canes. Remember, guys, all one big happy college football family. But, man, I got to tell you, it's always better at the end of the day when you get to throw up this U right here, guys. Love my Miami Hurricanes family. Talk to you guys soon.